episode of E72 and Connected. With us this month, we have Josh. Hey. And Tom. I gotta load up these show notes. I don't know what I'm doing. Well, hi to you too. Well, hey guys, um, how's it going? Pretty good. We're good at announcing things. I'm certainly glad that we did that ahead of time. Yes. 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 <laughs> totally. We did it. Look at that go. Totally went. Totally went okay. Just like I totally didn't have my mic there. Yeah. Yeah. 100% fine. Don't even worry about it. This podcast is really going downhill. <laughs> <sighs> so, um, I, I played a video game. Me did too. You? Wow. What's a video we game? We didn't even open with food. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, here? I was going to say, what the fuck, Tom? I what? actually... I, so... Okay, I've made a fucking horrible mistake. I've made the most dire of mistakes. Uh, my wife decided to go on a diet. Like, nothing crazy, no fad diets. Like, literally, we're just counting calories. Uh, well, she was just counting calories. And she asked me, she said, Hey, it would be a lot easier for me to stick with this diet if you did it with me. And I'm an idiot. I'm just, I'm the worst. And I said, Sure, honey. No, that that's honestly the right call. Because I, is can, it? That is I, right I call. can tell you right now, A, it's beneficial for you even if you don't want to do it. Um, B, it is a lot harder to do a diet when you're the only one that's going to, like, I had the same issue with my old roommate. I would get, what diet is it? We're, we're literally just counting calories. Like we, we have an app, we set a calorie goal and we can eat whatever the fuck we want. And if whatever the fuck you want consists of like half a cake, then that's fine. But you can't eat beyond your calorie goals. Neato. Yeah. Yeah, like my old roommate Tate would have like a bag of Reese's eggs oh, just like on the Jesus. cupboard. And I'm like, dude, I've, I've been doing so good. And then you drop this fucking bombshell on the countertop. Are you serious? Yeah. And that's it, man. <laughs> that's it. Like after that, like a fucking bag of Reese's eggs, man. I would eat one of those in a night. Wow. Yeah. That's hardcore. Yeah. Dude, I bought, yeah, I bought 40, 48 Cadbury eggs on Amazon and I put them away for two weeks. 48 dude yeah. a cadbury egg is serious man yeah that is some heavy ass fucking dude awesome i gained food. 20 pounds from that from Holy cadbury shit. eggs yeah from just fucking cadbury eggs this is like years ago hey dadam what's up um, Is adam here oh my god yeah he's in chat oh my god so i uh i'm on this diet and i i gotta say like it's it's annoying because I can't be a total fat ass because I totally am a fat ass. Uh, but <laughs> I've I've dropped sixteen pounds. Nice, Dude, congratulations! Yeah. That's really thank, good. Thank you. Now, now, don't congratulate me yet, right? Let's come back to this. Roll the footage from right now in six months when I'm like twelve hundred pounds and I can't even move and Irk like can't roll me out of his basement because I literally won't fit through the door. And then you can congratulate me. Right. Congratulate me if I keep the weight off and I don't revert to my fat assery ways. Well, that, that's the big thing is to make sure whatever you're doing eating wise isn't something you're doing just for the diet. Yeah. It's something you could do as a way of life. Yeah. Which is, right, right, it right. just, it fucking sucks. But I got, I got to say like 90% of this, I haven't been exercising at all other than going for Pokemon go walks, which we should probably talk about even <laughs> we though will, we neither, will. neither of us had it on our list. Oh no, you had it on your list. Um, other than doing those, I haven't exercised at all. I'm literally just trying not to eat like a fat ass. That'll do it. They say that like most of like, uh, most of a, workout or most of a diet is really just eating right obviously yeah yeah not, well not, diet's the wrong way of putting them most of like when you're trying to lose weight the 90 percent of it is eating habits yeah i mean if you look at your calorie burning during a workout session yeah you might burn off two sodas uh, during a Maybe. Burn. and granted that's nothing to shrug at if you yeah. are drinking three sodas a day and you only drink one a day you will notice a difference dude i've i've gone now I'm going to get like all the fucking health nuts on me about this, but I'm no longer drinking sugared sodas. I've switched to uh, like Coke Zero and I won't have more than one soda, like one diet soda a day, uh, but I'm on coffee. I'm on tea. Uh, coffee, generally keep it sweet. Like today I had coffee, cream and sugar, but I'm counting the calories. So tea, I usually nice. go on sweet. So are you... Uh so oh, I'll fizzy I'll water, dude. Sparkling water. Oh, I will put down like three or four sparkling waters in a day, man. That's my shit. Because it gives me like <laughs> yeah. the, the same kind of like, hey, you're drinking a soda and it's a bottle and it's in the fridge and it's super easy and you've got a bunch of them at work, but no calories. 
something I actually used to do in high school when I was big on track and stuff to get rid of pop. I would drink milk instead. Oh, you okay. said pop. Uh, <laughs> to get rid of soda. Oh, hold on, hold on. To get rid of the Coke, I would just drink oh my some God. milk. Nah, shut it down. Or you don't want the Minnesota next? Nah, shut it down. It's over. You don't want a Coke, shut Bobby. <laughs> hey, Bobby, can Wait. I get a Coke? Yeah, sure. What kind do you want? A Sprite. Did you just turn that Italian? Yeah, I did. <laughs> well, like that. it was kind of a Brooklyn Italian almost. Well, well, we, we I'm not proud of this. Like, Minis so. Minnesotan gangsters. <laughs> hey, Bobby. Yeah, I'm, I'm not proud of this. But it's going to be uh, Minnesota Noir next time up. Yeah. Minnesota Noir. Oh, my, <laughs> oh God. my God. So uh, did you oh guys eat anything delicious on 4th of July? I had the very American burger. I yeah. had the very um, uh, American um, uh, Indian food. Hell yeah. I had a very American pizza. Because oh, nice. I did a lot of yard work, and then I decided I didn't want to go to the store to grill, so we just took a frozen pizza and put it in the oven. Nice. You know, I, I really haven't eaten a lot of Indian food. I haven't eaten a lot of it, and I always think about it. I always think, like, oh, yeah, I probably like that. I like, like, Thai food. I like Korean food, all that stuff. But uh, we haven't really found, like, a good Indian food place. And oh, no. We, we found it. Oh, it's good. Nice. And now I just had it for dinner again. <laughs> dude i love so that is that. chicken korma is where it's at man so dude i have i been have we had a cast since i've been to new york no we haven't so um indian food related you you brought this up to me in new york they have this place called indie kitch which is okay. chipotle for indian food Ooh, it is huh. fucking awesome the only bad thing was i made the mistake of getting really close to where they're cooking it and like their walks and they had the oh. open flame and some seasonings hit the pan instead of the food, and I inhaled all the fumes of those seasonings. Oh, oh that'll my mess you up, dude. God. <laughs> like, I love spicy food, but it reminded me of when I put sriracha directly onto a hot sk uh, skillet. It's just like your eyes water, cough attack, get out of the fucking way. Yep. Damn. But it's Brutal. so good. I, I gotta say, I, I love me some chicken korma. So, so what did you get at this Indian place? Um, We got, what are they called? Some, 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 uh, some food? Some, uh, somas? Somas? Or is that like the pastry thing that's kind of filled with like some veggie stuff? Potato and samosas? Samosas, yeah. yeah. thank you. I don't know what they're called. I'm new. Um, yeah, I do. Samosas. samosas are fucking delicious. Some, uh, they did, uh, some, uh, what is that bread? Uh, normal bread. Oh, um, non. yeah. Non. So they did gar yeah. garlic naan bread. Dude, garlic naan is the bomb. Where it's at. Hell yeah. So and then uh, I did um, a goat curry, which was nice. Bomb. Yeah, that was awesome. And then just with some rice, they do a whole bunch of different kinds of rice, which I thought was awesome. So it wasn't just white rice; you can get anything. Yeah, all sorts of them. Really good, dude. Dude, where it's at is you've got to take your garlic naan, get like chicken tikka masala, butter chicken, or chicken korma, and just spoon that stuff directly onto the naan. Eat it like a goddamn fajita. And you have to put fried paneer in there. Yeah, oh, fried dude. paneer is to kill for. Adam and I oh hit this Indian place up by us when he was in Seattle, and the best thing in my mind was like they had um, this fried paneer, and it was almost like a plum sauce with it. Oh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> So Adam, Adam in chat is calling out garlic naan. You can buy them at the store and make pizza with them. And I'm questioning the legality of that action. It's like a garlic bread pizza hmm. meets a flatbread pizza. Yeah. Like, I don't That's know if you can legally do like, that. Well, speaking of just food in general, I think we've had a number of really interesting uh, posts in our food <laughs> oh god i keep forgetting that's that? a thing yeah, someone was making a baked bean pizza that sounds what? fucking awful what okay i going. try it there was more did you have you are you caught up holy shit what yeah. is this is, is that like I, craft singles they, on pop tarts oh yeah. you jumped ahead <laughs> yeah slightly slightly before that was donuts filled with baked beans no yeah no <laughs> yeah so am i alone in saying that i think like baked beans aren't good I, I yeah, enjoy baked are. beans, like, but only in certain occasions. Like, my wife will put baked beans on an English muffin and eat it for breakfast. I'm like, eh. But if I'm having, like, good brisket or a good, like, smoked pork, it, it's got to be with barbecue. Okay, well, my... What? Baked beans with barbecue, oh, okay. man. So you're, you're saying you would actually ask for baked beans? 
Yeah, I have I have gone to barbecue places and I have asked for baked beans. Okay, so here here comes barbecue place. You yeah. get one side. Mac and cheese, baked beans. Mac and cheese. Okay. Yeah, easy. Okay. Yeah, sure. That's not that's not even a question. I well, I don't know. I don't know. How good is the cornbread? To be, fair. To be 100% it? fair, I'd definitely go baked beans. Really? really? Dude, I, I... Yeah, over mac and cheese, yeah. Okay, now let's, let's throw a... cornbread in the mix, because if we throw cornbread in the mix, I'm doing that. It's cornbread, hit miss. No, 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 no. no. It's hit you, miss. Then, you, then, you, then you get up and leave. If you have to choose between <laughs> baked beans and cornbread, and cornbread just doesn't come <laughs> with your barbecue... You might as well just leave. Okay, All right, that's a good so, point. So we got two votes in the chat right now. We have Adam on the correct side calling for mac and cheese. And then we have Proto Tricks being a douchebag and doing the fucking coleslaw. Oh, fuck mm. coleslaw. I like coleslaw. It's awful. But it does not come over no, mac. It's, it's, it's not, not even food. Bread. It's an excuse for food. Like somebody looked at like some cabbages mixed with like some weird nasty garbage sauce in a dumpster somewhere. And they're like, yeah, I guess I could feed people this. That's what it's coleslaw is. Thing. Dude, I don't, I don't fucking get it, man. So uh, my thing with coleslaw is the same thing with me and salad. Is even if I like it, it's you give it to me to keep me occupied until my food's ready. It is not something I'm there to eat. Okay, you give it to me. Well, to you keep mean me like occupied. you're sitting there, you're bored, and you just want to fiddle yes, around? Yes, that's why they give you the salad <laughs> before the steak. It's okay. to keep you occupied. I gotta the say, steak's done. I've had uh, on several occasions this week because of this diet, I've had salads for dinner. Like I will take a, and you're gonna hate me because. I don't it's like not a salad. I don't like well, I don't like my lettuce with a bunch of flavor. My lettuce is a a delivery for fucking every everything else. Right? So I will take what? iceberg lettuce. Um oh God. croutons, starting out bad. ranch, yeah, mozzarella, uh shredded chicken, uh hard boiled egg, throw everything into the thing and make this big ass giant bowl of chef salad. Five hundred okay. calories keeps me full for hours. So my it's way of salad, at least two. Uh, really, only five hundred calories. Yeah, I figure the ranch would put it over the edge. I guess not blue light, cheese. Light if you ranch? keep it at hmm? light ranch. No, no, straight up ranch. I don't do light ranch, man. Fuck that. If I'm gonna have ranch, I'm gonna have ranch. I'm That's from the Midwest, point. man. I'm gonna have real ranch. You keep it at so, like three tablespoons, and and you're good. Three? So I was I was looking at this. Like, have you? Well, have you had coleslaw with vinaigrette, or do you have it with mayonnaise? Um, I, I'm a mayonnaise guy. Okay. Because it's really good with vinaigrette. I haven't had it with vinaigrette. It's really good with vinaigrette. And then you could make a real, you could make a lot of really good salads using different kinds of leaves and not just uh, iceberg. Like there's a lot of, Oh, I really totally get lettuces. it. Like yeah. I, I have had like super fancy salads with like micro greens and Hey, we grew this off the back of some homeless guy in downtown Issaquah and well, which doesn't make sense. There are no homeless people in Issaquah, but like we, we scraped these off of. <laughs> wow. Some was that elitist right there? Yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> yeah, know, we, we scraped these <laughs> micro greens off some hippie and, and we put them in the salad and they're totally free range, bro. And I'm just like, I don't give a shit. Give me fucking iceberg lettuce man i'm not eating it for your greens i'm not really? eating a salad really? for the greens you, i mean i mean it's not i hate kale Granted, i hate I kale the, the, i'm i'm going to be excommunicated from the west coast because i hate kale no you don't have i'm to not have a big kale. fan kale, kale's not that great i mean right. it's that's the joke it's a literal it's like the meme of the greens <laughs> right but like there there's a lot of really really uh a lot of really really good little veggies that you can have that isn't necessarily just iceberg lettuce. Like, what I just well, remain. Well, that's what I was going to say. Like, you, I don't not, really not even venturing too far out into the world. Yeah, yeah I'm not, you, you I don't really off. care for romaine. Romaine is the only way. Literally, to me, a salad is give me a head of romaine lettuce, chop it up, put it in a fucking bowl. There's my uh, salad. It's yeah. I'd I'd prefer like water with a bit of crunch to it, and that's why I have iceberg. But romaine I mean, has so much doing. more crunch. <laughs> what yeah, about but, like a butterhead uh, lettuce? Like I don't it's, know. It's bigger, Maybe it's bigger, rounder, more delicious. Isn't that just what you quarter to make lettuce wraps out of? I guess so, if you really wanted to. But I mean, there's more uses than just litter than just lettuce wraps. No, I mean lettuce doesn't have a whole lot of uses. Just to deliver meat. Yeah, <laughs> or to keep the bottom of your your burger bun from getting soggy. Yeah, it, it delivers the meat. It yeah. protects the bun. Delivers the meat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I'm good with that. You see, I'm not a salad guy. That's what my food. Is. I, I, I I couldn't tell. It's not was, food. Uh, it's that, food. Food. Yeah, it's food for my food. Yeah. Wait, wait. It's food for your food. That doesn't yeah. make sense. Salad Cow, cows is food eat the for salad. Food. I eat the cows. Yeah. It's no, food. Food. It's food for my how, food. That's not how lettuce works. It's not how this works. How <laughs> it's how it should work. work. <laughs> what do you What do you mean? 
I mean, I want my cows to be nice and fat and juicy so they can eat all the salad they want. I'll let them eat my salad. I get their We're ribeyes. We're your maths off on this one. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how that works, right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, anyway, yeah. guys, it's been a while. It's been a month. It's, it's it taken a little a while to get used to this it's been uh, a format. Busy fucking month in gaming. Yeah, I just, it's been crazy. Oh, actually, yeah, let's, what, roll the, let's roll the clip. Cool. And we're back. Yeah. So, wow. Um, that, that was yeah. a crazy week. But no, um, I did want to say I had a New York trip. Um, and part of my thing that I made sure of, I'm going to Nintendo NYC. I'm going there. And this is a week before E3. So I'm like, sweet. They might have shit set up. I was there two days before they started doing E3 events there. I was pissed. So I went there. There's this huge open space where you could tell they're getting ready for stuff. And I couldn't see anything. Ah. But they, uh, had, they had this sweet ass master sword. I mean, it like they always get these master swords that you could tell aren't real swords, but they look cool. This thing mm -hmm. looks like if you take it out of the glass display, you could cut someone's head off with. Hmm. I mean, it looked like that. a legit sword. It was looks awesome. looks vicious. Yes, looks like it actually had an edge on it, like it was balanced, like it was designed to kill. Designed to kill. Yes, absolutely designed to kill. Just like Eric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, um, it was kind of cool though. The New York store, um, it had some interesting statues and stuff. They had a lot of play setups where you could play with the uh, Switch stuff, but they didn't oh, nice. have they didn't have Labo for you to play with. Oh, okay. Well, let's talk about the more important thing. Screw Labo. Do they have the Pokeball? Oh yeah, did they? That's the only important peripheral that they're coming out with. I don't really give a shit about anything else. It was, bef <laughs> it was before it was announced. God damn it. So none of that was out. Damn it. I wanted to see that. Okay. Fuck it. We're, we're here. Um, what's your guys' thought on the new Pokemon game format? I'm going to what get it. What do you it. mean? Break so, it down for me because I don't, I don't know it. So, so it's going to be a mix of Pokemon Go meets Pokemon. It's not your traditional battle down and capture. It's like Pokemon Yellow meets Pokemon Go is yes. how they explained it. It's with Eevee and Pikachu as your buddies. Yeah. So well, I, I what about personally, all the other awesome ones? You can only choose those two. Yeah. Well, no, it's, it's a, um, are you familiar with the difference between yellow and red and blue? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, Pikachu yeah. follows you around. Yeah. And then so you can, I, now you can have yeah. only Pikachu follow you around, like in yellow, or Eevee follow you around. But you can still catch all the rest, like you wouldn't it. Yeah. What's the point? There What's is the none. Point? Like no, no, no. I mean, like having having them follow you around is all well and good, but like. It's 2018. I had to check. I actually looked at my date. I wasn't sure. We have the technology to have <laughs> other Pokemon follow you. Like, I, it's just... It's, it's a valid animation. point. It's absolutely a valid point. And I don't... So the reason they don't do that is because if they didn't have an arbitrary difference between the two games, they couldn't have two fucking games. You know the Pokemon, like, hyper fans out there are going to buy both versions. And if they just said, oh, it, we're going to call it... Pokemon, your buddy follows you around, and there's only one game. The Nintendo would lose like thirty percent of their extra sales. Well, they really all they would have to do, honestly, you could have like one. Po you could have them as the main ones, sure, like po <clears throat> like Pikachu and Eevee, and that's your starter or whatever. I see it here. I'm looking at it. Uh, let's go Eevee. Let's go Pikachu. Yes. Yeah. Like, I mean, as they could still do that, just. Let me use the other ones instead. And, and, and much we, rather we don't have a know, magic card right? follow me around. We don't know if they're going to allow that as an option. They, they might. Better. They, be, they might. Be, of what? I would be grumpy. Allowing something grumpy. else to follow you around. They're not going to. I doubt it. But they don't. You need do, doubt it. I doubt they let you do that. It's they're going to. It's the namesake of the games is going yeah. to be what it follows. I'm not saying it's right. I agree. It's stupid as shit. If I want a damn muck to follow me around and stink up the place, <laughs> let me have a fucking muck follow me around. I want all the NPCs to react to your thing. Because, like, in... in to with what thing are you talking about? The, the thing that's following you, you around. To jail. <laughs> I want yeah, all the NPCs that's, that's, that's how you end up to, in jail. to react to the Pokemon that's following me, right? Like, if I have Pikachu and Eevee, they can just be like, oh, it's so cute. No, if I okay. bring a coughing into a department store, some guy needs to come up to me and, sir, you have to leave. That'd be awesome. I, honestly, this is, this is what I think. If, okay, like, let's say... Let's say that you only get Eevee or Pikachu, like you do already. Like that's a fact, right? Yeah. Um, or maybe not a fact. We'll see. 
we're, we're assuming way, those are the two starters you choose from. Uh, yeah. Right. Like, let's just say that's fine. In this one, they're showing like like VR portions of it that aren't going to happen and other things like that. Like, is the idea to have them on you while you walk around in a Pokemon Go setting? Or is it exclusively for, you know, a sit down and play? Because it looks like the sit down and play element of this. And like, I really think we need to incorporate this so that we can show the trailer and talk on it. But, but yeah, it they me, have like the multiplayer aspect of it as the basic battle aspect of it. And it's multiplayer, which is actually pretty dope. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah, I, I'm curious to see how that's going to work. Like single switch multiplayer? Come on, that'd be there, sick. There's yeah. no way they're going to let that. I don't it's, know. They, they literally show it on the announcement. Yeah, they, they say, but I mean, like, you're going to have to have another game. Oh, and they Even show if the you're on the same switch. Oh, they showed the Pokeball too. All right. Well, yeah. anybody that's watching and happens to be chilling in our Discord, I'm going to go ahead and post that video in Discord. Feel free to, to check it out. It's actually pretty cool. This, so, Poke, this Pokeball thing, I'm absolutely going to buy. Uh, it shows the very unrealistic uh, older people going out for brunch and then having a Pokeball on them. Yeah. But we all know that that's actually true well, when it okay. comes to Nintendo because Honestly, we have all had the party where we brought a Switch and it worked out. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, we have. <laughs> so we can't even give them shit about that. We because... actually did the rooftop party that we all mocked when it Yeah. We, we went to my apartment on my roof and ate food and played Mario Kart. Oh, 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 nope, 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 oh. nope, nope, nope. Okay, no? everybody, buckle Maybe? up. Let's oh, shit. Get... So you can use any of the Pokemon. The it's you. in the trailer. And it you shows can? you riding an Onyx. It shows you it shows you riding an Onyx. It shows you riding a Lapras. It shows you riding a Charizard. Is so, that actually the follow? And it, shows other, it shows other Pokemon following you. Okay, so okay. all my grumpiness <clears throat> that I had earlier, I will okay. track. I'm buying the fuck out of this game. So, so the one thing I thought was weird is there's actually integration. It's not just go like there is integration with go. That's what I'm waiting for. for. This. I am so I am that, waiting that to see what this is. That integration isn't that special. So what it is is you can go and do your Pokemon Go thing, and then when you catch a Pokemon, you can transfer it to the game, and you can play it in the game. Yeah, and then that, there's hats. That's kind so of Tom cool. Oh shit! About that hats. Yes, yeah, so you can. You can hats. Uh, you can wear hats. There's hats. I'm quitting my job. But to me, the, <laughs> the important thing about that Pokemon Go that makes it really cool is keep in mind, Pokemon games never give you all the Pokemon. Never. There has never been one that gives you a complete Pokedex. You always have to mm. trade with a counterpart. That's Even true. Even yellow wasn't complete. Yeah. So by allowing Go integration, you don't need to be with someone with the second game. You can catch them and go. That's, That's a good true. point. I would actually probably pull Go up more often now if I can actually pull, like, if I could actually pull my Pokemon, because I do have some cool Pokemon in Pokemon Go, like my 10 Magikarp, that I will absolutely <laughs> pull over. Um, but, you know, I think it looks promising. I, I, I'm going to get it. I'm 100% so going to get it. I'm, I'm on board, going, everybody. My, my final thought regarding Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee is I like shorts. They're comfy and easy to wear. Okay. I don't go there. Anyway, I just want to see how it turns out. I'm on board out of curiosity, not on board because I think it's going to be a home run. I'm just going to play it. I My guess is it's just going to be a regular Pokemon game with a few gimmicky elements, and I'm excited about that. Hold on. Well, they or they Nintendo releasing a, just a standard game that's like all their other games with some extra gimmicky bullshit tacked on? Well, the, Say it ain't so. The gimmicky <laughs> bullshit takes a large part of the game out for me because I grind on wild Pokemon. Ah. That, that's how I play, is I grind on wild Pokemon. You have to grind outside with Pokemon Go and trade them no, in. But, but how's that going to work? Are you going to get experience? Or are you going to get levels? Is it going to give you the IV points that you actually get from battling real Pokemon? There's so many fucking unknowns. <laughs> Sorry, nerd. No, no, that's that's a different Pokemon series, actually. That's that's gold and silver. All the unknowns. Yeah, this is uh, a yellow, so they're, they're not even shut up in that game. Shut up. Okay. Oh, so in is this <laughs> one? Okay, so question. I don't know if you guys know. Considering uh, well, through that video, we've seen a lot more <clears throat> than anything else. But in this one, are they releasing? Is all the Pokemon in it, or is it the first one fifty? I think or is it's it... if it's gonna be like a spiritual. 
recreation of yellow i imagine it would be like the first 151 but i'm not entirely sure because it's got go integration which is already like cross gen boundaries so it's already got three different pokedexes in it yeah like i i have no idea how they're gonna do i that. don't i i don't expect it to be locked to any i think it's probably going to end up being all of them because with the switch being online it's easy as fuck to say hey we're throwing kanto hey we're throwing alola yeah and right. just fish sure. everything they want which i hope they do i don't like the idea of getting a new pokemon game and not being able to get everything i understand that means the scope of the game increases drastically i'm interested if like it's it. gonna oh, yeah i'm interested if it's going to be a um something that's going to be as hype as yellow there's a guy there's a guy that i watch all the time and all he does is speed run yellow like Ooh. that's his whole thing and you speed now, runs is yellow he, is he doing like a hundred percent is he doing any percent because any percent is like a five minute run now no yeah. it's a hundred percent he does okay, all the Jesus, gyms so man. it's it's insane like he looked like a he looks like a broken man but he's been doing it for like it has to be like five years like because it's ever since i've been like really active on twitch and he's just been always doing it and it's insane hmm. but uh speaking of this year did you guys did you guys catch gdq this year um i didn't get to watch much at all i watched a little bit of a half-life run i watched oh, man. a ton of gdq oh yeah what was your favorite run i have mine <sighs> um the celeste task was pretty fucking great um yeah. there's ah oh, shit i'm trying to think of it because it's not a speed run i would usually watch but it's super super technical uh the uh i think it was the final fantasy 6 run was pretty amazing even though it was seven fucking hours long it was a really good speed run because it got into the nitty-gritty of how they were breaking the game that's really awesome. cool stuff seven hours that's a complete run then isn't it um it was i think it was as fast as i could get i think it was any percent well no what i mean what back. i mean is it's not like a um they're not uh, like cutting glitch, out story yeah yeah a gl uh, credit oh. jump kind of thing like they're not like they they're not wrong warping and all yeah. that stuff like they're just I, I don't think they have a wrong warp ability or at least uh not one that i know of okay so they're not mem staff stacking or anything like that no. man just no. imagine seven hour speed run do you Dude. know how much you practice that and, and how he was, many yeah, hours? He was a fucking boss. Now, uh, the the biggest disappointment to me, which is it's it's really sad. Like I'm not I'm not going to blame the runner for this. I'm not saying that GDQ did a bad job by allowing this at all. I, I don't want it to come out, uh, across that way. I'm disappointed because it really sucks for him, and it sucks for the people watching. Is the Enter the Gungeon speed run? He died twice, and the run was never finished. Oh, it, that sucks. It just it sucks. He got bad RNG. There is there is I mean Enter the Gungeon is a fucking just, difficult game anyway. Why would you do a speed run with a rogue like game? Because I mean that there's so much RNG involved in that. Uh, I mean there's if, an if you ending practice. to it, so it's not a big deal. The bi the biggest thing um yeah, the biggest thing with those ones is you just got to play through them. If it it would be nice to see him finish it, but they're also on a time you know, there, there's a strict time frame that they're yeah. allowed to play. But uh, what was really cool, my personal favorite run of the uh, of GDQ was Pepsi Man. I don't know if you've seen. Oh Pepsi yeah, Man. I have, no. I'm very familiar with Pepsi Man. The Pepsi the Pepsi Man speed run was actually fantastic. You've got to see that one. I'll go ahead and post this one also in uh, in the Discord. Um, if you guys are looking for like a really cool technical speed run to watch of a, a classic game, the Half Life speed run this year was amazing. It yes, was really good. That was insane. Yeah. I've never seen that before. I mean, a combination of just sheer technical prowess and then understanding the game engine well enough or, or so well that they can pull off frame perfect tricks because it turns out that fall damage and half-life on the gold source engine actually takes place over two frames so if you get a frame perfect jump after you or right when you hit the ground it's only one frame so you take no damage crazy shit crazy shit for me it's always about the runner like if yeah if it's a really good run like and it's really amazing i can stomach like a bad runner but if it's not full of craziness that i'm i'm it's just really boring i, I it really love comes the down to how well yeah it comes it comes down to how well like the runner is, himself is explaining things how good the couch is and this year i feel like they did a really good job gdq is awesome the ocarina of time uh bingo run really entertaining i did watch that yeah, yeah absolutely they all played bingo 
so so what they do is they've got um a five by five grid of um essentially goals like get all the skulltellas in the water temple and spirit temple and stuff like that um they randomize the grid and then you have to pick one of those rows and speed run that as fast as you can and there's multiple people doing it um in this run there was only one person but traditionally bingo runs are races yeah as you said it'd be really fun to see as a race yeah uh, but it was it was really good, and they that way uh, the crowd got to see the actual speedrunner uh, contemplating the route. So when they were selecting which one they were going to do, they're like, "Okay, well, if I do this, I've got a route between these three points, and do so in this manner, and then I can use a wrong warp to do this thing." Uh, it was mm -hmm. really cool, really cool to see the whole process behind it. Hmm. That's definitely a different way to look at it, though. Yeah. That'd be interesting. I think I'd actually like that. I'm, I'm going to agree with Dark Soul Invader's comment here. He says, uh, back just in time for SGDQ talk. The event was pretty good this time, better than at least the last three. And I've got to agree. I didn't think mm. they were bad or anything, uh, but this one definitely had a lot of polish. Um, I listened to a podcast called The Frame Savers, which is put on by speedrunners and people that go to uh, GDQ. And they said that this is the first event where Games Done Quick has embraced their size. Before they were trying to say, oh no, we're a small organization. We've got to do things in a really like small, hacky way. And this one, they said, all right, we're spending money. We're going to get a staff. We're going to get interviewers. We're going to get professional equipment. We're going to mm -hmm. embrace the size because thousands and thousands of people attend this event every year. Let's just, let's just fucking do it. And now and, Twitch has been blowing up how it is. So if you have good production value, yeah. you're going to get subs. Yeah. And, and they did. It's true. And this was the fastest GD or the fastest SGDQ to hit $1 million. Um, I, I need to look That's up awesome. the, the total, but uh, they were raising money for Doctors Without Borders, uh, which is just fantastic. And they raised a shit ton of money. That is one mm -hmm. thing I always appreciated of GDQ is it's always charity based. Yeah. Let's get someone some money. So, well, let's get some organizations, some money. Yeah. And they always choose great organizations, right? It's always uh, Doctors Without Borders or the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Um, over $2.1 million. The first SGDQ event to break $2 million. Nice. Fuck yes. Nice. Good job, nice. guys. <laughs> so what have you guys been playing? You guys been playing things? Oh, my talking God. talking about other people playing things. Tom's Tom, Tom says, oh my God. Shit. I'll let him take Let's... it for a one. Okay. Um, we'll let so, you go this time, Tom. Next time, yeah. you might not be so lucky. <laughs> um, I've been playing some Fortnite. There's literally nothing to say about it. Uh, Don't Count Tropical Freeze now has funky mode, uh, and I'm not playing on funky mode because it's actually, uh, it makes the game Easy. much easier. Um, it, it feels nothing. like, it, it feels like they added that just to allow kids to play Donkey Kong Country. Uh, which is interesting. That's that's good, I guess. Josh has disappeared from the screen, and that's that's okay. Yeah, we're gonna act like that didn't happen. Yeah, um, I, th I think Josh's network died because he's totally out of the podcast. So yeah, let's just um, tell me about Funky Mode. What, what exactly does that do? Uh, it adds like some like a double jump thing. Um, yeah, sorry, I to totally just lost my train you, of thought. You just lost everything. Yeah, I totally did. Um, <clears throat> While we're trying to fix the video, yeah, yeah, we're in, trying to in fix real the video time. right now. So let's just roll, Tom. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is pretty fantastic. Uh, the music's great; it controls really well. Retro Studios is absolutely um, just killing it with everything Nintendo throws them on. Uh, it's really good, really good. Um, I don't know if it's worth the sixty bucks I paid for it. Um, if you can pick this up for around 30, I think it's absolutely worth the, the price of admission. Uh, but for 60, probably not. I pulled the trigger on 60 because it was right before we uh, left for our vacation. So mm. it, was, it was a good airplane game. You don't need online. Good fresh. It, it was a, it's a fucking good Donkey Kong Country game. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, yes. And we did switch seats. Thank you for noticing Predatrix. Yes, absolutely. We That's did. what you have to do when the video dies. We play musical chairs. Yeah. It's really weird. Every time. Yeah. Keep um, pay attention at some point in my switch back. Oh I'm shit! Back. It's Josh. It's Josh. I'm gonna I'm gonna get Josh back in this video right now. There he is. Keep holding that sign because we're uh, we're making like yeah, yeah. live so studio have, changes. Yeah, we're doing this live. This is why you need multiple scenes. That wouldn't fix things. this. I'll explain to you why, but okay. we won't go into it now. Uh -oh. Um, we're we're fixing it. Yeah, we're fixing. Just just keep going. Yeah. Anyway. Damn good Donkey Kong Country game. Um, 
Yes, Delaz, we are unnecessarily blurry. Don't worry about it. Um, I finished the Witcher 3's DLC. Uh, I finished Hearts of Stone and Blood and Wine. Um, I gotta say, I am fucking spoiled now. Absolutely fucking spoiled. Uh, because they are absolutely worth so much more than the price that they put it out uh, at. The, the story is fantastic. The missions don't feel like stupid little add-ons. The whole DLC experience really caps off the game in a, an absolutely fantastic way. Um, it's just, it's fucking wonderful. I put over 90 hours into the complete Witcher 3 pack, and I've got to say, I recommend this game wholly. This is one of my favorite games, one of the best RPGs I've ever played, uh, and really just an experience to behold. I will definitely buy Cyberpunk 2077 the day it releases. Yeah, it looks Damn. super, super fucking good. So Super good. CD Projekt Red um, actually said, hey, look, uh, this is going to be DRM free. We're going to do a bunch of free DLC. Our expansion packs are actually fucking expansion packs. Uh, and we're going to leave the greed to everyone else. So I, I'm super hyped for that game. And The Witcher 3 just confirms all of my biases. CD Projekt Red is fucking amazing. Uh, I did buy the Mega Man Anniversary Collection, which is good. Literally the uh, the best emulated version of the NES Mega Mans I've played. So on the NES, when you get to a, an area with a bunch of frames and a, or, or a bunch of sprites and enemies on the screen, mm -hmm. things will slow down because the NES literally cannot keep up with it. Um, so in the options of these emulators, it says, do you want the CPU on normal or turbo mode? And if you turn it on turbo, you get none of that slowdown. But if you go normal, I know Mega Man 3, like by fucking heart. The emulated CPU is so goddamn accurate. It slows down exactly like the NES does. It is really fucking good. <laughs> I've never been wanna... a Mega Man guy. It's just, that's so sad. It's, it's... You should take a step back a second ago, though. You did mention there was nothing to talk about on Fortnite, although there was some pretty cool stuff. Uh, yeah, I guess. That happened recently. I mean, I like the latest little update on the map, how... There's a big crack in the sky. That whole event was really cool. There's a forest growing in the big crater. Yeah, explain, yeah, explain I mean, that's, what that's happens. Fine. Like, back up completely. Nobody someone knows who doesn't what happened. Know Fortnite, there was a big thing how to do. Everyone was in watching something. What? So there's a couple things that you, we should probably touch on. So the coolest thing about Fortnite, I think, personally, is that uh, the map's evolving. Like, the map has been changing since release at this point. Every so often they'll add a new element the first time they just added a new they added some new elements but now they're like making reasons for like a little narrative of why the map is changing it feels like, like a, a big story. comet came down and destroyed the you know destroyed an area made a big crater crater drops a lot of space mm -hmm. fragments those fr fragments are like there's little trucks that appeared later on hauling off all of the space fragments eventually there was less space fragments Forest starts growing in the in the crater where the space fragments were it was. There's, really, There's really a really secret cool base. Like that. There's a random right. secret base that we stumbled upon in the middle of a mountain with a rocket. Yeah. Like and just out of fucking nowhere. Most, right, exactly. And then recently that rocket launched. And that was the most that was the latest uh event. And a whole bunch of people uh were in there watching it. It was really interesting because the the highest kill confirmed kill count. For one player happened when uh one player killed uh 48 people that were Jesus. standing on top of a ramp <laughs> and he just shot the ramp down the ramp fell and everyone died oh yeah i God. did i did see that someone pretty much was a douche and killed everyone trying to watch that's just fucking rude yeah. no that's it, fucking it was, awesome it's it reminiscent of wow back about 10 years ago when there was this funeral procession going on. Oh my God. No, that don't one even. jumped the entire funeral procession. Oh my God. That was, that was literally some like badass mafia esque shit. Like you're burying Vinny, right? Cause he got killed yeah. in a drive by and the other mobsters just sacked the funeral. Like you don't fucking do that, man. You don't That's do awesome. that. Yeah, because everyone was wearing. I don't know the whole backstory, and that is just someone crazy. died in real life, and they were doing. Oh, okay. A well, then that's fucked up. No, no, they yeah. were doing a memorial and wow for him. Yeah, and right. everyone was wearing their really good, cool-looking shit 
but they weren't ready for battle. And this other guild just comes in and wipes the floor with everyone at the ceremony. It was a fucking bloodbath. I remember when that happened. That was that was when we started having like discussions, like serious discussions about do you have honor in a digital realm and what does that mean? And I 100% agree with the AOL right now. I see nothing wrong with it. You're in a fucking game. You are fair game. Yeah, that's the whole I point. I still think hey, it's hey. it's rude as shit. Speaking of rude no, as no, shit. No, 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 what's rude as shit? Ceremonial or like being in the game and saying, no, I don't want to play with you. No, you're in the fucking game. Be ready. Yeah, that's the whole point. I mean, I think it really if, adds if, we're, if we can complain, it, it really adds, If we can complain about toxicity, to the game itself, though. if we can complain about toxicity, right? We can absolutely... No, I'm, no, no, I'm no, not that's gonna, not toxic. If what's toxic is saying, this guy was a douche, so I'm going to kill you. That's toxic. <laughs> right. I, I still think the whole thing is absolutely toxic, absolutely bad manners. I'm not saying that it needs to be banned. I'm not saying that the people need to be banned. I'm just saying it's rude as shit. Yeah, absolutely dishonorable. I, I don't think it's rude. I think it was fucking coming to it, it. Even on that level, it's it's just role play, right? It's just role play. <laughs> no, it, it, is, to it. it is. They're and not it rude. Was, yeah. Absolutely flawless role play. If you really wanted to get down to it, that's that's, that's awesome. true. That's true. It's it's their fault for being in <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Iris points it out. Is they're in a PvP server. They chose to do that. <laughs> and proto tricks. W- Since when has playing a game been toxic? <sighs> yeah, that's true. But you know, okay. So taking a quick step back towards like you know, okay, this guy killed everyone standing up watching a a thing. I think it's hilarious. Mm-hmm. They're they're watching this uh, <laughs> crazy rocket zoom around and then eventually cause a big crack in the sky um i I think it was fine but there's a different thing i've been actually that i've been having a hard time with as far as fortnite and all these games are concerned and it's just like the skill curve of these games now and and it's fine like in some respects but for fortnite and other battle royale um, games there's no mmr so like when you get into a game like this and you're just like just playing for fun or screwing around you're just gonna get shit on uh there there is and i know PUBG. PUBG has a hidden mmr that the better you do you end up getting matched with better players fortnite has yeah. nothing like that so so in fortnite like you can hit the the top 10 right or, or like the top um five if you're in squads uh but you will always get shit on if you're a subpar player now that said i i don't know if mmr handicaps or guardrails is really the best answer maybe the best answer is get good um but it it does absolutely feel like for me i'm not a good battle royale player at all no me either i'm trash and and i know going into this game i i'm sure i'll have a good time but i'm never going to win ever right no matter what now rocket league dota overwatch totally different stories right i i feel like i have a chance at winning but going into a fortnite game or a PUBG game i know there's literally no way in hell i'm going to but win. that approach in itself affects how you play if they was to match you with people with equal skill consistently you would start having more confidence and start playing more confidently you wouldn't go into a Probably, fire yeah, fight trying to hide to? what if you don't want to what if you really actually just want to play for fun like i for me i can only handle like one game played seriously no no you don't then, like, you don't have to play seriously mmr doesn't mean you have to play serious mmr just means right. they're gonna put you against people of your level right mmr is fine that's what i mean like what i what i what i'm trying to get at is that like these games need mmr systems and it, it's it's really really kind of weak when it does what it doesn't because I mean, I think maybe it does have an MMR system. I'm seeing some things saying that it does and it doesn't, but I don't know. I can't really tell. I, at the very Either least, way. they haven't come out and said that it does. Right. Because anytime but, you have a skill-based game like this, behind the scenes, they got to have something or so, they're going to well, destroy the, it's it. It's so different right now with, with like Fortnite especially. It's really, really hard like to learn the game because it's not just shooting right it's that whole building mechanic that people are having a hard time with and it's even but people are all getting very good at building right honestly i want i know people are really good with the mouse but if you was to come in fresh i wonder if it'd be easier to play with a controller knowing your aiming would be worse a controller maps for building better it doesn't 
I've been playing on the on the Switch a lot, and the controller feels jank as fuck. But you started on PC. That's true. That's true. Because I think it's easier to hit the multiple buttons on a controller. Like you have an LB menu, an L LT menu, an RB menu. And mm. that feels a little different on a PC. Yeah. Because that'd yeah. be like doing control one, control two, control three, and a shooter feels weird. That's true. Um, I don't know. Um, so uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's all interesting. It's just pretty crazy. Like just how how games are getting at this point. Like how the average player, how good the average player actually is. And this is taking a step away from just being a salty gamer, <laughs> but just like how insanely good the average player is at all of these games, and how quickly that becomes the norm. Like for instance, just like. Well, Fortnite, for instance, like people even at like a mid to low skill can build and shoot effectively. In Rocket League is a good example too. When we started, we couldn't even hit the ball, but now like really, really low players are like already hitting wall shots. Yeah. The know, worst I, of our friends are doing aerials and shit without any hey even guys. thinking about it. Tom, I was trying not <laughs> no. to say your name. <laughs> no, that said, that said, uh, I, I play a lot of bronze. I play a lot of bronze. And people still circle the ball trying to touch it because they don't know that, you know, X is a thing. Um, What's X? The, the slide. Slide, the, the tight turn. That's how I save. Why do I want to save replay whenever I'm trying to hit the ball? Uh, no, never mind. Anyway, <laughs> um, there's there are still a lot of bad players in Rocket League, but I think that's because Rocket League has a really cheap price um, and it's uh, accessible by kids. Yeah, it is. Um, now that said, I think Fortnite is going to have a lot of the same thing because it's free and it is really accessible. But the reason I think mm. it's going to be a little easy or not as bad on Fortnite is because you're not going to get complete cross platform. You're not going to get the console <sighs> babies off PlayStation. I okay. Well, it, I was going to wait to bring this up, but fuck no, Sony. We're right here. Let's do it. Fuck Sony. It, so it's just Sony. Microsoft it's just Sony. Yeah, Microsoft and Nintendo put out fucking ads saying, "Hey, we love crossplay. You want to play Minecraft on the Xbox with your friend who's got a Switch? Fucking do it. You want to play Rocket League or Fortnite cross platform with PC players? Who the fuck cares, man? Just fucking do it because we love video games. Now, it's totally corporate speak. They're totally feeding us a line, but at the end of the day, I can play Rocket League with people on the Switch or on the Xbox, and I cannot do that with anyone who owns a PlayStation because Sony has their thumbs up their ass. If you ever log into Fortnite on your PS4, you will never be able to play on a Switch. You cannot link your accounts because Sony said, yeah, we're just not going to let you do that. Epic literally says, hey, look, sorry, uh, Sony is preventing us from doing this, so you can't ever have an account on the Switch if you've ever played on a, on a PlayStation. Sony, Our bad. Sony came out with some corporate speak saying about, we're not against it, but right now it's we're protecting our people, blah, de, blah, de, blah. It is literally because they are in the lead. Well, they I, are in the lead. Yeah. They're on the lead on consoles. That's it. But here's the thing. Is it because of the tech debt that they built in the original PlayStation Online system that also doesn't allow you to change your name? No, 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 no. They literally turned it on on Rocket League and Fortnite. Accidentally. accidentally turned it on and yeah. it was running fine. It's a fucking checkbox. Everyone a... was playing and partying up. It was fine. Everyone already, it already had it. It's yeah. not a tech issue. Is literally just a checkbox issue. Yeah, it, it's it's They're Sony in the lead. That's it. Game developers have talked about this. Epic came out and said this. Uh, Psyonix came out and said this. They say, hey, "Look, we would love to do this, and we literally have a checkbox in our engine to enable this. Sony doesn't want it to happen, so we can't. Our hands are tied. If we turn this yeah. on, Sony will ban our game. That's it. That's it." Honestly, I think Fortnite could live with that, and I think it would be fun. They'll, I they'll completely never do it. agree. They'll never do it. No, they but won't. But it would be great to see uh, Epic say, "Fuck you, we're turning it I, on." I do want. Something. I, so the the real <laughs> answer to this is, I want to see uh, an option in Fortnite where you log in on the Switch and it says, "Hey, your account's you know linked with the PS4." And I, I know people who have played Fortnite on their PlayStation one time one time just to try it out and they never went back to it because the pc was a superior experience for them and they bought a switch they want to play it on the go and they can't i want epic to come out with a feature where you log on to the switch and it says hey 
uh, you've got a Sony account linked here. Do you want to disavow this? If you disavow this, you will never be able to link this account on a PlayStation again, but fuck them, right? And you say, yeah, fuck them. And then it disavows your account from Sony completely. That's what I want to see. That'd be pretty sick. That would be some, uh, some, some mafia strats there. Yeah. Well, someone needs a strong arm in at some point because it's getting ridiculous. I mean, Microsoft, I think, is actually doing this the best. Granted, they're the one in the worst spot, but they're letting their first party shit on other platforms. Yes. Yes, exactly. They're letting Minecraft on the Switch. That is first party. Let's see Nintendo put Mario somewhere. That won't ever happen because it's Nintendo. What's, well, what's really weird, who owns, uh, who owns Crash Bandicoot? That's not Sony anymore, right? It's no, can't I... be because... I, it's every fucking way right now. I don't think it's owned by Sony. I think it was just no, a platformer it's, it's on It's Naughty Sony. Dog. But they got heavy helpings everywhere. from Sony Computer Entertainment. Because, like, I saw that It's on, on the Switch! On, yeah, I thought that was really weird. I don't know why I found it so weird. I was like, huh. It's, it's kind of weird. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, um, speaking of games and crossplay and happy people, uh, Rocket League put out literally the best DLC known to man, the Jurassic Park DLC, with literally <laughs> the best goal explosion, which is a big ass fiery T Rex. Yeah, that like was that. pretty good. Yeah. yeah, it was great. One. So, also, well, like, it was $2. I started with the Jeep and realized quickly that this is just like every other DLC car, well, most DLC cars, and you can't do shit with it. So I got off the Jeep and just put the T-Rex cool explosion on everything. You know, I, I agree with you to some extent, except that the Jurassic Park Jeep is literally perfect. <laughs> there you go. Literally it's just perfect. An it, it's all placebo, man. <clears throat> like when it really comes down to it, it's just, it's got to get used to it. It's just turning radius. There's nothing superior about anything, any one car. It's just, what are you used to? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. I picked up Hyrule Warriors. Um, whoa, 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 Before we step off of this, yeah. uh, keep in mind that on the 9th is the anniversary, uh, like the anniversary uh, update for Rocket League is going to come out. Are they doing the goals? And it is. The yeah, new, the so that'll, that'll yes. be, the, it'll be more like a, uh, like a hockey field. Yes. Or actually more like a soccer field. Oh my God, I can't wait. Oh no, it'd be more like so hockey because the goals are mid-court or midfield. They're not actually at the back of the field. Right. Well, I'm, yeah, they're they're still they're not like in the middle of it, but yeah, yeah. No, no. Exactly I'm just saying there's there's space behind them. Right. Exactly. There's a bunch of space behind it. I think it's gonna be really cool, and I think what would be really nice is to see a tournament come out where they use that exclusively. I think that'll add a real element, really the only, elevate the play. The only thing I'm kind of upset about is I love the map. I want to play it. Is I wish they weren't fucking with the physics. Mm. They're make, they're making the ball lighter. <laughs> Yeah, I, as long as I could do a private match with it, like and I know that they're standard. not going to put it into casual. They're not going to put it on the playlist um, as just a thing. But as long as like if I can make a private match of it, we're going to be playing that like every yeah. single night. Yep, I'm in. I think it's going to be so interesting to see what happens when you can't play off the backboard offensively as easily. Because normally yeah, you kind of take I, the ball in the corner, pop it out. Here you would have to really pop that bitch off the wall to get it to be a pass. Most of my goals last night were from, uh, you know, someone missing a shot and me redirecting it. And I guess yeah, today... What would, what would be really nice to see is, like, if you, if you miss a shot with this and you, like, wing it off the crossbar or you slightly miss it and it goes a little bit over, it's going to go to the back. So you're going to see, like, if, if it actually people start playing it, I think think positioning is going to really open up in a really yeah. interesting way. I think the front man is going to have a lot more to do than just put the ball in the net. You're going to almost do a reverse clear because you're going to have to get behind the goal and hit it out to your teammates on right. offense while you're on offense. It, it's going to be super interesting. I can't wait to like, and, and it's a ramp off the back. So as a third man, you can rotate back for boost. And then, you know, with the, you can reset your flip off of that ramp and just not use it flow all the way to the other end and use it whenever you want. It's it really elevates the play. Like the amount of things that you can do and the amount of elements that are available to you is absolutely insane. I still think scoring's going to drop because I think you're going to have to be more accurate now, but I think it's going to be so much more fun. I think you'd be surprised. I think everyone's a lot more accurate. I'm I think not. people <laughs> Yeah, I'm I, not I, at I, all. <laughs> at high level I, I okay, think, maybe. I think I think the mid-level, I think, I think that people are so accurate 
even at the mid mid to lower level that they're not going to have a problem scoring if there's a free net. I think most of their shots are coming off backboards. I don't think that's true. I think yeah, I think I, that's. An I would love of to it, see I actual really data. Think- I would like to see data around this. Now we're not going to get that, but we can assume that Psyonix has plenty of data from plenty of people playing Rocket League on all kinds of platforms with each other, except Sony, um, and that they have the numbers to say, okay, is this going to actually change the way Rocket League is played, right? And that might be yes, it might be no, but I'm going to give the the benefit of the doubt to our, our glorious benefactors and leaders at Psyonix, Psyonix, please, um, that they are doing the right thing for Rocket League and the community. <laughs> yeah, we won't see anything from this for a quite a few seasons but it's pretty cool <clears throat> yeah um so i got hyrule warriors here's my official review it's dynasty warriors with a zelda skin okay oh, so you mean it's true to name yeah it's it, literally just that's always what they are so that's yeah, not no. even a it's fun the, point the gundam one i felt was really good okay the, yeah, one, I mean, that's, the fire warriors one was really good they're all really good they're all fine uh there's i nothing, started there's with, nothing wrong with them yeah i started near automata uh, it it's kind of cool. I like how I got a, a credits roll right when I didn't expect it. I, I literally have put less than an hour into this game. Yeah, there's like 23 <clears throat> endings. Okay, holy shit. Yeah, okay, I fucking died in the credits roll, and I was like, hmm, I think that was a scripted event that was supposed to happen, and then it put me at the beginning. I'm like, oh no, I just suck. Beat this game. <laughs> I think we'll bring a special guest on next month and because I was talking to said person about this game. They recently okay. played it as well. This game is super, super fucking good. It's one of the few games I feel, yes, this story is amazing. All right. And it really enhances. Nice. I, I like were, what I'm seeing so far. There was two of those last year. Um, have you gotten to the modification system yet? Um, I've seen the initial impressions, and I realized that I can take out my OS chip. Um, pro tip, don't take out your OS chip if you're a robot. Yeah, I never did that. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to clear some space. But I, I love the idea that your HUD is all part of the same upgrade system. Yeah, so if you want like to add extra abilities, you can be like, oh yeah, turn off auto-targeting, take off the map, and take off my health bar, because that'll free up like three slots. Yeah, what I was doing was I had a I'm exploring build that made me faster, and okay. I have maps. And then I have the I'm in deep fucking combat. I don't okay. need a map. I don't need this. Give me life steal. Give me extra damage. This game is so fucking weird. I'm going from like a 3D brawler, Streets of Rage beat 'em up to like a, a Mars Matrix top down shooter to a, a Sideways R type shooter to fucking Star Fox. Twin stick. Yeah, like, what the shit, man? And the way the game, like, flips between these so seamlessly, it's not like, oh, hey, here's the end of a level, you're gonna do a Star Fox thing now. It's, hey, you're doing a Star Fox thing, except the camera pans mid-battle, and now you're in R-type mode. What the hell? It is beautifully done. Square it's Enix gorgeous. knocked it out of the park. I wish PC wasn't an afterthought. Yeah, that port is really subpar. Now, that said, it may take it, out of the experience okay. every once in a while, but you can still thoroughly enjoy the game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's literally the reason I'm not buying Final Fantasy XV. Nier, I made an exception for because the game got such amazing glowing reviews, but Final Fantasy XIII was a bad enough port that I just won't buy Square Enix's shit on PC anymore. I I heard XV was pretty good. Uh, Souls can speak <sighs> to that at a later time, but I'm pretty sure XV was a decent port. Okay. I, it's it's not enough to get me to to buy the game. Um, I I did beat a game though. I I picked up and beat Firewatch. It was five dollars in the Steam Summer Sale. You mean you watched Firewatch? Uh, no, I actually uh, I feel like I played this. Um, it, it's absolutely a walking simulator, but you do very little other than walking around and hitting action um, occasionally. Uh, there's little pieces of the story that you won't pick up unless you actually go and find items and then radio them in so it doesn't like spoon feed you 100 percent of the content it speed foods you like 80 percent of the content uh but it's a 20 that really fleshes out the world i enjoyed it i think five dollars is a perfect price point i really enjoyed campo santo's writing they know how to write characters they know how to write people and frankly that's the reason valve picked them up is because they desperately need writers right now they do because you know they, they fired the entire half-life writing staff but yeah well, they didn't fire them. The Half-Life rating staff left. Okay, and then they leaked Half-Life 3. Yeah. Which proves that they can count to three 
They just don't want to. Exactly. Yeah, they're, they're just holding it over our heads at this point. Yeah. Half-Life 3 is going to be a bonus goal for a Steam sale. Like, we're going to see, like, this big, like, hey, if you spend, you know, collectively six, seven trillion dollars, we'll release Half-Life 3. It's sitting here on the shelf. It's been done for years. Tom's running to his bank account. Where's my money? Where's my money? Where's my money? Oh, yeah. shit. Here it is. Here it is. Money, do you, money, do money. you have, uh, like, a bank account that I can set my direct deposit to? That would make it easier for me, Valve. Like, you don't have to give me any games. Just let me directly directly wire my entire paycheck to yeah. you. Yeah. Give me Half-Life 3. That'd be great. Um... So yeah, Firewatch, I, I liked it. Uh, if you want a chill game with a story, um, it's it's good. Uh, I did pick up Shantae. Um, I've mm-hmm. not gotten too far in it, but I, hopefully this gets better. But about half the game to two-thirds of the game feels like fan service. In, in the graphics, in the enemy design, and everything. Like, hey, look, here's a, a busty mermaid that's chained up BDSM style as a boss. Go have fun. That's literally only like two two elements of it, though. It's you just gotta and, get past that. And then it's, and then you crouch, and then Shantae is like wiggling in a like clearly perverse way, and then there's the <laughs> dancing thing. Like, okay, it's it's a fine game. It's built fine. The gameplay is okay. I I just can't get over how fan servicey this is. Oh, you it's, don't it's, watch anime, so it's, it's really <laughs> hard for me to get I, over I, the fan service. Yeah, it's fine. Like, it's not that bad. The dialogue's fun. It's pretty funny. The gameplay itself is really, is pretty enjoyable. I love how you can switch between everything. I think that, I think that they could have added more complexity to some elements of it. But I had a great time. It was a fun game. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish the game eventually. Uh, I just, I don't know. Just not quite it's what just kind of it's just kind of weird. Like I don't know. I stopped playing fan servicey games a, a while ago. Really, really, you did? Because you didn't pick up Star uh, Star Trek Bridge Crew because that's not fan servicey at all. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Fair point. Fair point. I will take that. I will take that. I, I did say, pick that's up. That's literally the next game on your fucking list. Is nothing but fanboy. Yeah. Okay. That so is I did. True. I did pick up Star Trek Bridge Crew. Uh, and, and in I, all fairness, Tom, you are the most fanboy person. I, yes. I, I, yes. I will I will admit that. Fuck all other launchers. If you're not GOG, you're not Steam, I don't like you. Yeah. I don't care right. how good you actually are. Even though I did buy Battle even though I did buy Battlefield One on Origin. We and need I, to I, talk about that because that we do. Honestly, I, I'm gonna jump <clears throat> ahead from what you're about to talk about to all right, that. Let's let's talk Battlefield One. Let's yes. just let's just get this out of the way. It was fifteen dollars. I bought a game on Origin from EA for fifteen dollars. And you didn't was, just buy a game from Origin. You bought the game from Origin. Yeah, there's that only like the, one game. That, no, that is the like the Origin game. That is the EA game. Like that is one of them. The Battlefield franchise is like I, one of their cornerstones. Battlefield One is a lot of fun. Now I I have to say like they they Clip lay it. on. Yeah, I, I said it. I said it. They lay on the loot box stuff pretty thick. And if I paid sixty dollars and I got shook down like this, I'd be very unhappy. But I paid fifteen and I'm getting shaken down, and I'm like, yeah, I'll just ignore you, and it's fine. I think fifteen dollars for this is, you know, it's easily worth thirty bucks. Uh, the game's a lot of fun. Um, I haven't played a Battlefield game since 1942. Uh, at, at That's least a seriously. long time. Yeah. That's yeah. like That's I've like been alive. For, That's yeah. seventy years. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, it's been a while years. it's been a while <laughs> um but it's it's fun it's a good time i enjoy it. i enjoy the the weird way the planes handle mouse and keyboard style uh i think it's oh, fun to all switch to control no dude i'm doing it all mouse and keyboard oh. yeah uh which is why i crash all the time it's so much fun to jump into a tank or a battleship with your buddies and just rain hell on the enemy it, it's great it's a good ba- time yeah let's circle back a little bit <clears throat> to how much shit you gave the game as you were downloading, it, as you were contemplating purchasing it? Oh my god! As you, as as it they got, made to the it loading so screen. hard to buy. But, they but, made it so no, hard to I buy. Mean, I like, went to the store page and they're like, "Hey, here's everything. the sixty dollars version that has literally nothing. We didn't even include the game, and here's the fifteen dollars version, which we're dissuading you from buying, but is really like the super game of the year edition that has literally everything in it." Why, it's not if, that bad. When if, you hit if you're buy, going when to you hit buy, it shows up. It shows there's two. 
There's only two in a list. Yes. They're side Why by on side. Earth? What? One says buy and it has a list on, of features. Okay, okay. The other one two, says buy. There's two reasons and it it's has an a issue. List of features. Two reasons it's an issue. One, because holy shit, they're actually advertising a product they'll make money off of. And two, because it's EA and Tom hates everything no, EA does. Like, if, regardless. It's all Tom. It's if all there's Tom. if there's a game back. of the year version of the game that's cheaper than the full game, show me one. It wasn't. No, no, no. At the time, when you hit buy, you open Origin, and you open and you hit buy. Like, I want to buy Battlefield 1. It showed you a list of two. One that was $10, which is the game that you're talking about. No, it, it was 60. 60. It was it 60 was, on my screen. No, no, Tom, you, Adam is explaining. What happened is the $10 version went off sale while the other one was still on sale. So the $10 version went back to 60 Oh, oh, that's so they the, staggered up. So that's, that's the hilarious. stupidest shit ever. That no, just that's means, just your dumbest shit and didn't realize it's legit. You just wanted to bitch because no, that, it's that EA. literally means that they have a $60 game and a $15 game, which are the same thing in the same store page because some guy at EA couldn't tell no, time and realized no, that they were they're different. different. They no, are different. It's not true. I'm reading Adam's thing. The original version was on sale for $10. That's what happened. When you yes. go in there, it's right there. There's there's a list of two. They're side by side. Maybe there's something weird with yours. Maybe you're seeing something else. But when no, you go Tom by, saw the EA, so it had to be wrong. No, I, I saw 60 it, and I saw 15 it, and I bought the cheaper one, which had more stuff in it. And I was very confused. Yes, because the 60 was the base game. I the was, base game was no longer on sale. When you the, go what? and you buy, it shows... But the, my like, point is their page. store page was really fucking poorly laid out. Because it shows you it your buying it options. Too. It shows you it, your options. How is it, that it, poor? It was poorly it's laid out. It's not poor. It's not. It was Tom, absolutely Tom, poorly laid out. You have to concede at this. No, because even, even fucking GOG <laughs> did the same thing with The Witcher 3. They had The Witcher 3 base game for $40, and they had Game of the Year version for 20 on a sale. And I was like, who the fuck is getting fucked over by this? The people who don't want the game of the year edition and they're too stupid. They don't know they're fucking up. That's their yes. own fault. Why do they target me? I'm a stupid consumer. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So going on from that, you, you proceeded to bitch just like this. Yes. W w within the whole group of five or six people that are loving yes. this, right? They're absolutely loving the game. They're having a great and time you, and I am just and you bitching. Proceed to bitch it. And then you finally get in the game and and five, then I bitch five more seconds into the game. No, no, I bitch even more when I get into the game because now now I've got to load in the game and then figure out how origin oh, does right, party yeah, stuff. That, that and then I've got to open up 37 loot boxes that don't like they they you show the same goddamn to. animation. Actually, he got upset because he had to launch the game. It should have done okay, it for so him let's, automatically. Let's, let's oh, yeah, there, there, there was let's that. Let's talk about this. So he launched the game. Those loot boxes, those 47 loot boxes come free. I know so you didn't I actually was still, have to open I them. I didn't have to, and I did, and I was complaining the whole time because of free That's shit. On yes. you. And yes. then, so then from there, once you those loot boxes just go away. They they hide in like a nice little hole. You don't actually have to deal with them. Then then from that point forward, you actually get into the game. You actually finally get into the game, and your first instant in expressions was, "Wow." Yeah, that was the. It's very fucking. Thing. It's fucking beautiful. It's a goddamn beautiful <laughs> game. The soundtrack is amazing. It controls appropriately. It's a shit ton of fun. The maps are all well designed and laid out, except for one where it's way too dark. Adjust your gamma. Yeah, I probably should. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a it's a whole shit ton of fun, and I I can recommend Battlefield One to anyone uh, as long as they don't mind like. The, the weird loot box thing stabbing you in the face all the time. That's pretty standard, though, it anymore. Is, I still don't like it. Like, Overwatch does it. Fucking Dota does it with all the treasures on the front page. Counter-Strike does it. Uh, Rocket League sort of does it sometimes, but not all the time. For what? I, it, the hey here's crates and DLC and, and it's you on can, their... You can disable it in Rocket League. There's a little check. Okay. It's a little checkbox. You never see them. All right. But, you know, I mean, even like it's not even remotely intrusive as far as Battlefield's concerned. I'm, I'm uh, going to echo Adam's statement, though, um, to when your party is joining a server, it says, hey, hold this button to join in. You know what that fucking key is? It's backspace. And it's the worst. You, right, you don't see that. You, can you have don't it. hold you can backspace have for anything. <laughs> That's ridiculous. What? Yeah, when you want to, when your party is joining a game and it says, "Hey," it doesn't like automatically join the game with your party. It keeps you back. It, so it works kind of the opposite of literally every other game with a party system. Um, it says, "Hey, hold backspace to join your party." Backspace. Backspace. That sounds like a prank. 
Yeah, I know. Yeah. Max is going to be hit Alt F4 to confirm. <laughs> like, I, I encountered that shit in AOL chat rooms. Yeah, I said that. Anyway, Star Trek Bridge Crew. Um, <laughs> Back to? Uh, has a really weird problem. So you know how there's, like, standard games and they're like, oh, we have a VR mode, and it's just fucking garbage because you know it wasn't built for VR? This has the exact opposite problem, which, by the way, I did have to install Uplay to play this, and it's not nearly as bad as I remember. It's still not great. But it's not nearly as, as horrible as, as it was with fine. Far, uh, Far Cry Blood Dragon. <laughs> um, anyway, this is a VR game built for VR first that has to overlay a 2D interface on top of the game. So you literally, to control things, your mouse is a physical hand. And when you click, it pokes things. And sometimes like it'll snap to buttons. But the camera, like on one of the ships, on the original Enterprise, the camera's like here, and some of your buttons are down here, but you can't move the camera and click at the same time. So there's literally ship functions you cannot access if you are not in VR. Hmm. Also, it won't let you into a game. Like my wife and I were on Discord talking to each other, trying to get into this game. It won't let you into the game unless it detects uh, your mic with volume. Which is a really esoteric issue for me specifically because I play remotely on a you know, remote server somewhere. So I had to monkey patch my Discord audio into a microphone to trick the game into letting me play, even though we had our own voice chat. It literally won't let you launch the game without that. I kind of like that. I, I get it. I really it do. It means that but... I can play alone and know that I'm getting in a lobby where people are talking. Yeah, I, I get it. I, I really do. But <sighs> G give me a toggle. I, I want to toggle. I want to go to the options and say, yeah, this isn't required for me. Yeah. So it's it's weird. I I don't think it's worth the money right now. It is interesting. Uh, it is absolutely for Star Trek fans only. Um, that said, if you guys want to buy it, I think it's a fun party game. Get Artemis. Artemis, uh, it runs poorly. It uh, it doesn't work over the internet very well at all. Nintendo so it didn't make it. it. Yeah, Nintendo didn't make it. Uh, I hear it's some guy on, that it's not on Steam. Some guy that yeah. used to actually it is on Steam. Oh really? They yeah, put it they put it on Steam, and they actually because the original license was hey buy this for your house, uh, and and you can share it with everybody. The Steam version is actually way cheaper than the one on the website because I said yeah since you have to have individual accounts we're just going to cut this price in in like into a quarter. Yeah, it was GOG style almost where buy this exe and <sighs> distribute it to whoever you're playing with. Yeah, it was it was actually a pretty nice model I have yeah. to say. It worked really well. Uh, that said, does not work over the internet. Hardly at all. Uh, I beat Axiom Verge. It's like Metroid. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I got Prey. What do you think? Uh, I'm fucking loving this game. So I, one thing I have to ask right now, how did you like how they rolled the intro credits? Jesus fucking Christ. That was pretty cool, right? It was goddamn beautiful. It was glorious. All right, so... Is that a spoiler to talk about the fucking intro credits? Oh no, so don't worry about spoilers. Do it. All right. So anyway, you you get in this helicopter and you're flying to a place. I'm not going to spoil anything beyond the intro credits because uh, the game is pretty fucking sweet. Um, and it's flying you past this building and the building title, like the letters on the building, actually showing the the name of the company or whatever. It's like you know a Bethesda Studios game, and then you fly by this other building, and it's just like or you fly by a bridge. It's like uh, an Arcane Studios production, and then you finally land, and it's in big block letters where you're landing. It just says "Pray." I was like, holy shit. It's classy, awesome. it's effective, it's cinematic as hell. Uh, this game feels a lot like a horror in space version of Deus Ex. It is everything I wanted from Prey. The only thing I didn't want is that they literally stole the title from a game that it has no relation with. I will, yeah, I, I do know that. People always thought it was a sequel. It's like, no, it's not. Yeah, it's an entirely different game. Uh, Souls did have a lot of issues when I was watching him play where like the audio wasn't working. He couldn't click on shit. He was completely really? got fucked at one point. He was stuck at the very beginning for a couple hours, if wow. I remember right, because he couldn't hear what was going on to be able to pick something up. I, uh, I actually haven't run into any bugs with this, at all, which is weird considering that Bethesda even looked at this game. Yeah, if, if it has their name on it, it's normally a few thousand. Yeah, 
Uh, so, uh, speaking of Bethesda, they're suing Warner Brothers specifically because of bugs. Um, oh, but this is good. Oh, this is so good. And, okay, I'm going to steal this exact line from Orange Lounge Radio, another gaming podcast. There is nothing more Bethesda than this story. Because, so there's there's a Westworld game that looks suspiciously similar uh, to, what is it, like Fallout, or, uh, Fallout, Fallout Shelter. Shelter. Yeah. yeah, because it had the same developers. Yeah, so it had the same developers. Uh, and Bethesda's like, hold on, guys. This looks really similar. We're going to sue you because we think you stole our code. And Warner Bros. was like, dude, what are you talking about? Just because the games play similarly. And they said, no, because Fallout Shelter has this specific bug that this Westworld game also has this specific bug. No, no, even better, that bug that was in Fallout Shelter was fixed before release. Yeah. So, oh, so insane. They literally took the code uh, this developer took the code and rebuilt a different skin on top of Bethesda's existing game that they paid for. So stealing ideas in gaming is not copyright infringement. Stealing code is, is copyright absolutely infringement. copyright infringement. That will get you fucked up. Uh, so yeah, that's absolutely the most Bethesda thing I have ever heard. Is, yeah, hey, their bug is gonna win them a fucking lawsuit. Yeah, yeah, that is that is so great. Um, yeah, uh, so. Speaking of lawsuits, uh, PUBG Corp has dropped their lawsuit against Fortnite because they realized that you can't just sue people because you don't like them. You have to have a reason. Or they realized, hey, let's not sue the company that makes our engine. Yeah, there's that too. And also Tencent owns or has stakes in both companies. So Tencent's probably also like, hey, how about we don't sue ourselves? Yeah. There's a I, lot of weird ass things about that lawsuit. Fucking video games, man. <laughs> Speaking of weird things, um, you ever seen like a red plumber running around with a tennis racket? Uh, only once, but I was in uh, Kentucky. Ah, okay. That yeah. explains that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Mario Tennis Aces. <clears throat> that shit's good. Yeah? That shit's real good. Some of the new stuff they added is really fun. I heard that the single player gets finished or you, you and run out of content really quickly. Um, I am stuck in adventure mode. Jesus. There okay. is a spot that I'm at. I'm like, this is fucking brutal. Huh. Hmm. And to me, I'm going to play a lot online. I just haven't been able to play as much. Like, I'm only about five, six hours in. I've yeah. been enjoying the piss out of it. Yeah, I'm stuck in a thing. I'm stuck in this really strange spot where I don't know what to even get on the Switch at this point. I don't even Axiom know what Verge. to get. I don't know what to play. If you, if you like Shantae, get Axiom Verge. It's then, not too long, and it's really good. The thing that sucks about the Switch is Nintendo didn't help you out at E3. Yeah, congratulations. They reiterated Smash Brothers. Again. Where the fuck is the rest of your first party lineup? Where's Metroid? They didn't show anything about They're, Metroid Prime 4. After the big premiere of the first year, First party is dropping the fuck off. Yeah. And it's really troubling. Now, now, that said, that said, the Switch has got a very impressive library today. Because of third parties. Yeah, only because of third parties. Nintendo put out nothing after the first year. Yeah. Where's Animal Crossing? Well, Metroid well, actually, Prime 4, they showed a JPEG like two years ago, and that's it. Here, here, here's where your Animal Crossing no. is. No. For audio people, no. that this is a phone. No. That's where your Animal Crossing no, is No, Animal Crossing microtransaction, you know, fucking Hitler death camp is not what I want in my Animal Crossing. You know they can do that on the Switch, too. <sighs> I Hitler know. death camp? Yes. Animal Crossing Hitler death camp. Let's not get into that. But yes, there is some <laughs> stuff about that. It's it's interesting. <sighs> but yeah, I, I, I was really troubled by Nintendo with that. Like, where Every... is your announcement? You announced Metroid a year ago. Yeah. Given updates. Just just say, hey, we're, we don't have anything to show, but we're working on it. Oh, I forgot. They did announce one other thing. Mario Party. Oh, yeah. That actually looked Mario interesting. Cool. I enjoy Mario Party, but give me something to play by myself. Yeah. Um, now, that said, Nintendo's uh, E3 Direct thing, because it wasn't like an actual conference. They just literally rolled a video, uh, which... I like it's cheap for the company to do. They can put out more videos. I, I enjoy well, it. And they do it through the year, like once a quarter, I think yeah. is what they've been doing. Yeah, it's great. I actually really enjoyed that style of announcement. Um, one thing they did do super, super well is in the Nintendo Direct, they said, hey, uh, yeah, by the way, Fortnite's on the Switch. That already leaked. You already know about it. 
you can download it right fucking now. And I, I literally was watching it on Twitch. I pulled out my, uh, my Switch. I went to the shop. I hit Fortnite. I hit download. And I had the game. That's super cool. You realize they had a developer sitting there yeah, waiting just to like, know that audio cue is coming now. right now. Yeah. It, it was so cool. Um, and they also did that with Hollow Knight. They said, hey, uh, by the way, Hollow Knight, you knew it was coming. Uh, it's out today. You can download it in a couple hours. And I was just like, holy shit. So I bought Hollow Knight and I downloaded it in a couple hours. That is something I will be getting on the Switch. It's really good so far. I, I can't, I don't want to talk about it right now because I've played a very, very small amount of that game, but I really enjoy it so far. And I Adam, want, Adam's I want hit all, a good bit of it, so by next month you should be able to compare yeah. a lot with him on that. I want all game companies to do something like that. Like the stuff that it's kind of already leaked and the games are mostly done or totally done. They just say, hey, yeah, we're announcing this thing. Get hyped. Buy it now. And I'm that's it. Like Apple used to do that shit. They used to be like, oh yeah, we're we're dropping like a new Apple mobile car. With but, fries, and you can buy it right now. But I mean, Nintendo has been really good about that lately, I'll say. Outside yep. of the Metroid shit, I mean, the Switch was announced four, five months before it launched. That's true. I mean, that's crazy. They already are hinting at a new Xbox, and that won't be ready for another three, four years. Yeah. Yep. So I, I enjoyed Nintendo's press conference. Um, believe it or not, one uh, conference actually... <sighs> Okay, enjoyed is a little strong because it was really cringy in some parts, but Bethesda had a decent showing. A new yeah, we're Skull absolutely going to get uh, Fallout 76. It looks interesting. Um, I'm going to wait well, for the reviews, but it absolutely looks interesting. I, my interest yeah, is peaked. you can absolutely wait well, for the actually, reviews, but we're also going to... So anybody that's not waiting for the reviews, we're kind of... We play a lot of... Uh, the Fallout franchise, me and uh, the Wi-Fi, uh, we always do. We always have. Even if it's bad, good, doesn't matter, we still play it. In this one, it's multiplayer, so you're you're absolutely... You know, I take I'm, it back. I take it I'm back. I'm not going to buy this. I'm absolutely playing it. I mean, I'm, I'm my absolutely playing it. It's going to be so fun I'm with not, everybody. I'm not going to buy this. I'm not going to ever play it. My cool, rule then of, let's not, and we can just play it and not have to worry about Tom complaining yeah, about yeah. it. I was just yeah. saying, my rule um, of thumb is on multiplayer games, I like to get them as soon as possible because if you same. pick up a multiplayer game three years down the line, you lose a lot of the actual luster of the game. Yeah, that's, the, that's true. The, the, Dark Souls rule. I literally, it, so I was super excited about this game, and then I remembered that they're going to be using the same engine that powers Fallout 4. So when I, when we launched Fallout 4, my wife wanted to play through it, and I, I had heard bad things, so I was ignoring it, but on on the gaming pc that runs vr 20 frames per second yeah but for the record the same engine doesn't mean it's gonna be shit PUBG oh, runs on the same engine as fortnite yeah they, that is a good point performance that's, is that's completely a good point. different okay so my uh, maybe i'll pick this up and maybe i'll return it before the two-hour window ends that's yeah, a good way to, that's what that two-hour window is for if it, it doesn't is. run you give it back that's a good point that's so, exactly what yeah. it's all right there we're we go gonna, we're playing it uh we're absolutely getting it we're absolutely playing it it's we're going to play through it with a bunch of people i have four or five people that are already getting it and are absolutely going to play it no so i think it's going to be yeah i think it's going to be a good time because the thing is is this is this is this is it it doesn't matter what game it is if you're playing with a bunch of cool people it's going to be fun like that's you true. can't it doesn't matter it could be a you know a game with a bunch of boxes for or instance, a, a game with it, a bunch of naked men swinging their penises around that you then grapple to make a giant naked man tower. Super fun yeah, game. It do, it That's a super not, fun game. It's a great though. game. It, it does not matter what game you're playing. If you're playing with homies, it's always fun. So, so I, I can't imagine that this one is going to be. It may not be the best Fallout that's ever been. It may not have all of the little meticulous elements that you expect. But it will be the most fun I'll have in a Fallout. The for idea damn sure. that that players can eventually get to the end game of being able to nuke each other is really interesting to me. Do like I Noclip did um, a big expose on Fallout seventy six and Bethesda themselves, and it was super interesting because they were actually there in the thick of Bethesda Studios while they were building Fallout seventy six. They got super access. Yeah. Oh, it was cool, and I, I love yeah, Noclip. I that. love everything Noclip does, um, and. The game designers at Bethesda were like, well, we don't know what players are going to do. Is some madman just going to fucking nuke everybody? 
I don't know. It could happen. We're letting it happen. Uh, it's, is some madman going to hold the world at ransom? Are two superpowers going to rise up with tons of nuclear weapons and put them all over the map and just hold a mutually assured destruction party while staring each other down like the Cold War? Uh could, Maybe. And I, it could just be not even a thing. Like People could just shoot each other a lot, and that, yeah. that could be the whole game. But you or, know what? Like I am really excited just for the prospect of playing with other people. It's going to be I think interesting. This is, I think just being able to play, uh, like have a Fallout experience with other people is insane. Like, granted, you're not going to have like it's not going to be like a sim where there's some people running people running a bar and other people's not. But I think you know, I think that the potential for multiplayer is 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 pretty big, and it's not a giant one. It's not like a massive multiplayer. It's not like there's 700 yeah. people yeah. in a server. There's like 12. And we, as 72 Pin Connector, are going to be half of that server. So, or, yeah. or the complete. Or the Either complete way. server. We can very easily be the complete server. And I just really look forward to like an arms race between someone like, I don't know, D-Labs and, and, and Dave. <laughs> um, Bethesda also showed a JPEG of the logo for the Elder Scrolls 6 so we can look forward so, to that in about 10 years two questions yeah. does that mean that this is finally the generation Skyrim dies or is this actually just going to be Skyrim and they just put a plus one on it. So, so uh, I actually this this meme has been going around the internet, and I'm absolutely stealing it. The game starts out, and some guy's like, "Oh wow, could you tell me about the the story of the Great Civil War?" And this old man's like, "Oh, when I was a young man." And then it goes into flashback mode, and you look around, and your hands are bound, and you're on a cart, and it's just Skyrim. They sold it to you again. The whole game is a flashback. That, that would, would be, be amazing. awesome. I I would I couldn't even be mad at that. I'd just be like, "Wow, Todd Howard." It, it's like wow. the it, he's just Rick rolling people at this point. He's like, "Oh, dude, you did it yeah. to yourself." Like, and it still has all the bugs in the here. same places. Yep, it's the exact same game. It's just like <laughs> I would love it. So I would, it's, it's going to be interesting. It, I would buy it twice just because he got me so good. The the thing I'm not looking forward to is uh, in these new Bethesda games is that the the Steam Workshop and the easy like one click modding support that Steam is is kind of given birth to uh, is dead in Bethesda games. Uh, yeah, because, because they developed their own. They developed modding. the creator workshop where they want you to pay for for mods and shit. And well, it was it really other, bumped... there's other places you can go to get. Uh, better yeah, mods. so so Nexus is a thing, but oh my god, they've gotten spammy recently. Like we tried to sign up for a Nexus account and they pestered us for money like nine times. So and, and then their their applications are fucking awful. Is it up to the modders' discretion to make it a paid mod? On creator, uh, no, I, on I'm not entirely that because if it is, I'm game for it. If a modder makes a really cool mod and he said, "Hey, give me a couple bucks," the issue cool. with that is in the details. So when Steam did their paid mod thing, the thing they saw uh, in in most of the mods being uploaded as paid mods was somebody went to Nexus Mods, pulled something for Skyrim, put a price tag on it, and uploaded it to Steam. It, it wasn't it wasn't their own content. They literally stole a free mod and put it up for sale. But the issue there is you have Steam regulating mods for other publishers. Right. This is housed by the publisher. Right. And, and Bethesda uh, has come out and said, eh, you know, hey, we're regulating this ourselves. We're, we're, we've got a staff of people taking care of this. And I don't know. Maybe if, it'll work. Yeah. If they allow it to be up to the modders about the price, I think it's fine. If it's easy. Like, look, okay. The way I view it is if it's like uh, Rocket League trainers. Where there's this right, huge yeah. listing, you just go in, click, click, yeah. click, I want this. Yeah, that, that would be great. That would actually um, be even better than Steam mods. Yeah, it, we, we again, we were trying to put some mods in Fallout 4 to make it work a little better. And we had to go through Nexus because nothing existed in Bethesda's little shop. Um, I don't know. Well, well I mean, it's a, de it's a dead shop anyway. I mean. Yeah. Um, so uh, in other Elder Scrolls news, they're putting out a mobile RPG. That might be okay. Is this Skyrim on the phone? Uh, no, it's Elder Scrolls Blades, a new game, but uh, honestly, the graphics kind of look like something from the PSP era. Not that that's bad. Uh, it's just that we're getting that kind of fidelity on a phone now. Like um, Oblivion style? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, Good. interesting. Um, they're also making a trading card game because Blizzard makes a lot of money on Hearthstone. Um, and they announced Doom Eternal. And I'm buying that. What is this? It's Doom. Oh, Doom Eternal? Yeah. It's a sequel. Oh. Yeah. Sweet. Doom 2016 2. 2016 2, so 2018? Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. 
That'll be cool. Uh, GameStop is dead. Oh, wait, no. Uh, Bethesda teased Starfield. It's a original RPG in space. In space! In space! Nice. Uh, so, you know, that might be cool if we ever see it. Uh, GameStop's dying. So that's good. I didn't actually read that. What was the details on this? Uh, so GameStop has been losing a shit ton of money because people buy video games online now. Um, and uh, what? If, since yeah. when? Uh, since about... Well, the, the Switch has an online store. So I think since about the Switch, I still go to, okay. to Walmart to buy my PC games. Yeah, same. No, I, I, I still buy physical Switch games because I'm about to be owning two Switches. That's actually oh, a really good you, point. You have a you have a totally reasonable. I think, yeah, you have a very reasonable reason to buy physical copies. But actually, there was a there was a uh, statistic that people that own consoles are uh, still prefer um, physical over uh, over digital. Yeah. I, I wonder digital. if that holds if you tell them you can't buy used. Uh, I think used game sales are where. Uh, physical shines because you, so, yeah, you just true. can't get that like i can go to gamestop right now and buy some actual really good first party games a few years old for two bucks that's true i'm, I'm never going to debate the the cost saving aspect I, the reason i prefer digital on my switch because i'm i'm only going to have one for the foreseeable future yeah. um is that on the bus, I don't want to fiddle around with the game cards because I, I used to do that, right? I used to flip between uh, Mario Kart and Zelda and uh, Splatoon, and I've got physical carts of those games, and it's fucking annoying to fiddle around with that on a bouncing bus. You see, to me, I'm on a bus for half hour, 40 minutes. I'm okay with one game. I, I like... So, I'll get on the bus, I'll play a game of Fortnite, I'll die instantly, I'll switch to Rocket League, I'll play that, I'll get sick of getting just fucking wrecked, and then I'll switch to uh, Enter the Gungeon, and then I'm at work. But all of those games don't have physical options. Uh, Rocket League does. Oh, Rocket League does have physical. Rocket oh, League has like true. a super edition. Oh, you're right. You're right. I did see that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's it's kind of rare, but yeah, they they do have a physical. Um, but yeah, so if you go into a GameStop today, it's mostly collectibles, toys, uh, gamer lifestyle merch, uh, Game Informer magazines, you know, shit like that. Um, and they have been bleeding money for a long time now. Uh, they are talking to a uh, private equity company, Sycamore Partners, uh, about a buyout interest. Which means that they would take the Funko Pops in the old, um, what, is, what is that Funko store Land? they bought? No, what was the store they bought? Uh, Nerd, not Nerd Wallet, Nerdvana? Or they, GameStop bought a physical goods store, oh, a geek store. Uh, yeah. But I, I could see the buyout options being, we'll take that, we'll take Game Informer, and uh, let's get rid of the game store. Yeah. Or yeah. it becomes a used game store. It becomes a national brand second time around kind of thing. Or I, I think game shop. so. GameStop has been quickly moving into gaming goods and not necessarily games for, for several years now. Yes. Um, and I, I could see that. But that, that said, what most of these private equity companies do when they acquire another company is they take the things that will make them profit and they just shed the rest. Yeah. GameStop will be shredded like a chicken. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Game Informer will stick. Yeah. Because Game Informer chicken. actually has a good digital outlet. Chicken. And it's still, people still get the physical somewhat. <laughs> and I think the physical media, <laughs> like the, the nerd shit, like the little amoeba style stuff, I think yeah. that'll stick. Yeah, probably. And the game sales will go. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Because, uh, you know, online retailers and, and even like big box stores like Target, Walmart, etc. You know, you can find plenty of Amiibos there. They've got huge well, no, no, sections. I'm not, I'm not saying just Amiibos. I'm saying that style of oh, merchandise. Oh, like the collector's items and yes. stuff. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I could see that. It becomes more of a gamer store than a game store. I absolutely could see them shuttering a shit ton of GameStops, though. Oh, fuck yeah. There's, there, there's, there's too many of them. Everywhere. They're fucking everywhere. And the only thing I've been to a GameStop for in the past 10 years is to buy a Steam gift card before Steam did online gift cards. I will. Thank you, Valve. I will say for. Um, Although that's kind of. That was kind of in the ass. Oh my God. Because you had to be friends and all that stuff. Yeah. I've. As much as they're my employer, I've gotten away from using the Amazon new game stuff for physical. If it's something I want immediately. I get that. Because there's, A, even if it comes that day, there's a chance it's going to be later. So on games when they release, I'll go to a GameStop because I want it now. I, I totally get it. Um, 
The, so there are things I'm going to miss about GameStop and physical like game specialty stores. I remember waiting in line at a midnight release party for one of the Grand Theft Autos uh, and just chilling inside of like a totally abandoned mall with just gamers everywhere. And we were talking about games and fun stuff we played. And it was it was a great time. It was like a, a community gamer I don't know, party thing in the middle of an abandoned mall when we were waiting for the store to open. Well, and the GameStop employees themselves are really cool to talk to when yeah. they're not trying to push you on buying stuff. Yeah, it, which which to be fair, it's not the low-level employee's fault, right? It's corporate breathing down the management's neck and management breathing down the employee's neck. An employee, it's got no fucking option if he wants to keep his job. Then which, they try to sell you 75 issues of Game Informer. It has gotten up. better. It has yeah. gotten better since that new story released. Okay, Go good. figure. Yeah. But, you know, I... I did enjoy GameStop. I, I hate the thing they've become. Uh, but, you know, right after they bought Funko Land and EB Games and stuff, they were kind of a nice place. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. They had a good stretch. They did. Um, so uh, let me see what else is on our show roll. We've got a lot. Of but you know what games. else had a good stretch? Got to bring this up real fast. Toys R Us. Yeah. And Jeffrey's dead. <clears throat> yep. Uh, speaking oh. of things that are dead, Valve uh, is allowing everything on Steam. Oh, yeah, Which, but I thought that was kind of cool in a way, in one way, and really lame in another way. Yeah. They're going to regulate I mean, achievement farming, but that's it. Yeah, so there was, there was an issue where some dude put, like, a school shooter game on Steam, and Valve's like, whoa, that's not cool. And then Valve's just like, hold on, there's a bunch of porn games on here. Those aren't cool either. Uh, and then someone's like, Valve, you missed these, like, 27,000 porn games over in this direction. Like, oh, shit. We don't have enough manpower to regulate this. Uh, uh, I guess everything's allowed unless it's illegal or you're clearly trolling. Which is yeah. literally what they said. And I'm torn. I, I like that policy. But that game that was in question was in very poor taste. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There was a, a game where you could play as a school shooter and kill students and cops. And it's from a company that is notorious for just doing assetless games and yeah. just making is that, them in Is engines. that Hatred? hatred no, maybe? no. Hatred was totally different. Hatred actually had uh, you know content in development put into it. This was literally an asset flip game. Hmm, okay. Not to say Hatred's a good game or anything, but it was developed. It wasn't just... Well, things you know, like that should probably... I mean... Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. How do you how do you regulate that, right? There there are games that, you know, are awful in awful ways and you do inhumane acts, right? I'm thinking of Manhunt in particular was a game that literally made me nauseous in some of the executions. Uh and it had, you know, a really good out of game message which is, "Hey, look, Violence isn't all GTA Vice City where you blow someone's head off literally with a sniper rifle and it's fucking hilarious. It's a perverse thing." In shown in a realistic manner, you know, violence is disturbing. And I liked the Manhunt series because of that. Never played them. I, I'm not going to say they were good games, but it was an interesting way to approach the question. They're definitely, they're definitely one of those games that you, you play and you're like, oh, that was fucked up. The second yeah. one was really bad. But I yeah. mean, it was... It's definitely it's it's the same reason you play uh, what was that one by Running with Scissors that um, Postal, uh, AOL Instant Messenger yeah. just called it out. Uh, and and yeah. Postal Postal I, I will totally disagree. It did not have the same. We're showing you realistic violence in a realistic way because we want to show you a, or teach you a message that Manhunt did. Uh, Manhunt Postal, didn't feel like that. I didn't even know that there was that message, and I played through the whole game, so oh. I don't think they were on any sort of like some sort of you know white knight of oh know, i'm not saying that it's rockstar messages. they're out to make a they're out to make a buck right um but you know postal was definitely more of a uh parody game well i'm right. reading As there was all a, the rockstar games are there was a cat shooter or a cat silencer in postal yeah. Uh, yeah. And well, Instamester also points out the uh, JFK shooter simulator, which got plenty of controversy several years ago because you got to shoot JFK. And the developer said, no, 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 guys, you're going at this the wrong way. I built this game to try to dissuade conspiracy theories to show that, yes, this sort of thing is possible and absolutely a realistic scenario. Uh, and he built and modeled like a frankly beautiful physics engine to show that yes the body would slump over this way and the head would retract this way and he he did it as a learning experience teaching experience you know poor taste or not he's not doing it just for the hell of it 
Well, and that's honest. I, I mean, think it's a little different. I like that. I because that goes on. <clears throat> this is really weird. Stick with me. It's kind of like some of the sciencey games that they make for molecule creation that can actually help make different pills and stuff because of the way the mo uh, molecules get structured. It would be something where with a realistic physics engine, you can actually do the shots that were possible. So you, you as a gamer could then limit out what could or could not happen. Right. Like an actual, I, like I totally get it in a realistic sense, like scientific validation style sense. So there, there are several gaming news outlets, people on Twitter, podcasts, etc., It's saying that valve is taking the easy way out because they don't want to hire more people to scour steam. And I, you know, I can't disagree with that sentiment, but that said, I don't think it's Valve's job to police the internet, right? It, it might be Valve's job to police their own store, but if they want to allow what they want to allow on it... It's the open market idea. If it's yeah. not illegal, we'll let the market decide if they want it. I mean, if, if you're going to blame anything, you could blame capitalism in the free market, uh, but I don't know if, you know, blaming Valve will do much of anything if people don't buy them they'll stop making them yeah so I mean, uh, no developer is going to waste their time making 10 gruesome games that are in poor taste if they don't sell that's a lot of time a lot of effort even doing asset flipping yeah that's that's true uh and at you know what is it 100 bucks you know on the steam store now 100 yeah. bucks a pop yeah so yeah uh I don't know. That, I, that I think this a, is fine. That took a serious tone. I'm yeah. going to switch it up a little bit. I did play switch. one game I wanted to talk about. It was Slap City. What is Slap City? So we all like Smash Brothers. No. This is Smash Brothers <laughs> for the poor man on console. Or on PC. It played like the literally on, on the PC. controller. If I hold right trigger and hit left, I pull up a shield and then I roll. <laughs> and if I hit... B, I grab someone while I had the shield up. And then I throw them. And then I have smash A attacks, left, right, up, down. I have power attacks, left, right, up, down. Then I have my up B's always an aerial. It is literally a fucking poor man smash. Hmm. Is this the same is this the same game Dunkey reviewed recently? I think it is. It certainly yes. sounds like yes. it. Yes, uh Delia's the hot dog man or whatever. Yes. Yeah. It is okay. actually pretty fun. Hmm. And it was cheap. And it, it, it does play a lot like Smash. Interesting. So, oh, uh, speaking of, we should probably mention because this was, you know, literally Nintendo's entire press conference uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. Yeah, we've got a title now. Uh, and the thing that sets this game apart from all the other ones is literally every fighter who has ever been in any Super Smash Brothers game ever is in the roster. And Snake's ass is smaller. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Nintendo, like Twitter, they were all fucking ready because they said, yeah, we we shrunk Samus's chest a little bit to like make her proportions more accurate to the character. And the fanboy was like, yeah, whatever, dude. But then they showed Snake and they got rid of Snake's bulbous ass. And the fanboy was just like, what the fuck did you do to Snake, man? We need his ass. They nerfed, Snake is missing an ass. They nerfed Snake. Yeah, they nerfed Snake's ass. Uh, nobody cares <laughs> about Samus's chest getting shrunk. That's totally fine. But Snake's ass, that thing is sacred. You put it back, Nintendo. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it I don't know, looks like a Smash Brothers game. Yeah, I'm um, gonna get it. They say there was like ten thousand balance changes, which yeah. I think is a nice way of them saying the ten thousand changes were the ten thousand differences from bringing in the new characters to the Wii U version. Yep, because it is the Wii U's version with all the characters plus uh, fuck the Metroid Pterodactyl. <laughs> the Metroid oh. Pterodactyl. Ridley? Yes. <laughs> I always, yeah, they, honestly, they did bring in I Ridley. Saw, when I heard it was Ridley, I was thinking Alien, I think. Oh, oh. <laughs> no. It's not that, 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 like, that would be awesome. She gets in the fucking, like, uh, oh my mobile God. forklift thing. That'd be so fucking Oh, that great. would be awesome. I'm like, I, they're like, like, someone was talking to me about it. They're like, they put Ridley in the game. I'm like, that's a weird choice. <laughs> <laughs> How much did they pay for that? <laughs> I'm like, I'm um, like did, okay, so, I guess... When they announced Ridley, they got fucking dark. He Ridley stabs Mega Man through the fucking heart and kills Mario. Nintendo killed Mario. Sweet. Yeah, it's pretty fucking dark. Um, yeah, but speaking, there's a bigger issue. Oh? Okay, it's not every... Every character isn't in uh, Smash. Every character that has ever been in a Smash Brothers game is in the Smash Brothers game. 
Waluigi yeah, has tank, never yeah. been in a Smash Brothers game because everybody hates Wah Luigi. But Wah. <laughs> No, <laughs> no, no, no. No Wario, law for you. It, Wario is the only good um, doppelganger. I, that's you know, a lie. Have I've got, I've got a soft spot for Wario Luigi, but I'm a Wario. I'm a gonna win. They could have made him an Echo Fighter, but no, nah, he's gonna be an assist trophy. And awesome. even even Sakurai um, said he said, yeah, that that's just not gonna happen. Yeah, Sorry, guys. Fuck it. Um, Command and Conquer uh, it's getting a new game and the internet was like holy shit this is going to be fucking amazing and then they said yeah it's a mobile game and the internet got pissed yeah so did as of right the, now did you see the really sad thing that like uh, Total Biscuits uh, lady said yeah what's that she's like uh, nah I'm not even going to go there it's not even worth it alright but um but yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so Kingdom this, Hearts this makes 3? pretty much any old school RTS fan is now holding on to Microsoft as their last hope with Age of Empires. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean StarCraft's still a thing, it is. But it, I mean it is two never hit the peak that one did. It, it hit a really big peak because it came in in the esports era that actually existed. That's true. That's true. I, I'm just not a StarCraft guy. I'm not gonna hate on it. It's fantastic. I'm just not that guy. Um, Kingdom Hearts 3 gets release date, uh, January 25th, 2019. Uh, you can have the best incomprehensible story with the Disney characters you've always loved. A lot of people yeah. love that franchise. It gives you enough time now to replay through all of them, including the 365 over 2 times 5, 9 times 8 times what 4. What the fuck? Okay, real talk, real talk. What the fuck? Why can't they just call it 1, 2, and 3? Because, because what do you do between two also, and three? What happened to Battlefield? 1942 and then like nineteen forty three. Yeah, nineteen forty three and then subtitles well, and then I mean four okay. And then so two four, and three four, and on, one and then we go back to five. Okay. Like and is Kingdom this a Heart, Doctor Who episode? Kingdom Hearts three isn't really even Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> yeah, the honestly, Kingdom Hearts one point five, that one, the reason that is one point five is because it also incorporates all of like the random DS titles in the same game. So it's not like it, they can't because the Nintendo DS titles weren't a part of the one, two, three. That there's like other parts of that trilogy. Oh, Granted, just... it's kind of a cop out, but there's a whole bunch of different ones. And in the end, it's the Square Enix title, so it doesn't matter what they call it. You're still not going to understand what's going on. <laughs> so and this one in particular, I've watched three or four videos on like the lore of Kingdom Hearts. Still don't know what's going on. This is supposed yeah. to be the last, like the conclusion of the story. If I cool. Them. I don't. I don't even know what the start of the story is. So, H have you played them? I've I've played all of them, and I've watched multiple videos on them, and I still don't fully grasp. Because the one on. person got taken to the other side, and then his best friends on that side too, and he's and there was gone some weird evil, like yeah, trying but then to get people his heart are back. other people and hypnosis then, like, or time travel thing. and like I, I don't fucking okay. know. It's, it's a square soft it, game. Okay, let, let's bring it back to something we all game. know. Battletoads is coming back. Holy shit. I, I actually don't really care. Well, yeah, it just same means... <laughs> exactly. like, I'm, like, I'm excited it. that somebody like remembered it. that Battletoads existed. I'm excited that some poor GameStop employee, when he gets that call, hey, Can do you have answer? Battletoads? He's like, yeah, actually we do. And fuck you. Yeah. Um, but I, I think this is literally just a name drop and a cash grab. We'll see, right? We have no idea except for the title, what's, what the game's actually going to be. It could be fucking amazing, well, but I honestly don't care right now. I don't play beat-em-ups unless I'm with friends, because personally anymore i feel I, i'm bored by beat-em-ups i used to love street fighters too i used to love turtles in time it just doesn't do it for me anymore i will Scott still Pilgrim play streets was of my Rage. last favorite beat-em-up that came out fairly recently although that one mother russia bleeds looked really it, it's fun fucking yeah, that looks awesome good. I, I the thing is is like they just don't do them that often i think a beat-em-up yeah. like seeing a good beat-em-up fad would be a lot of fun but i think like as far as like Turtles in Time, uh, Battletoads, those ones. Like, I feel like things just need to kind of stay where they where they're strongest. And as as far as like a new Battletoads, like I don't know, I'm I'm okay with it. But it's just actually like, what, it's what we do now is just remakes and remasters. The last been, the last beat 'em up I seriously got into was Castle Crashers. It's great. Yeah, but uh, I, have you ever played it by yourself? By myself, yeah. I found yeah. it boring. It's a little boring. That, yeah, that's, my, that's my issue across the board. Now, what they could do is if they bring in like RPG elements and item, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And make it more of an RPG being up. Yeah, I might be interested, but then it doesn't feel like Battletoads. Right. 
yeah, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see. It it could be interesting. Um, I don't know. Uh, I just don't think they're going to put like a stop the presses. Yeah. Stop the presses. Brand new news. Uh, there's another Halo game. We didn't know. Is this so? Is this the one? This is. This is I didn't follow this this so closely. Is this the same one that they're going to take over? There was the. They were doing one Halo game, like an independent group did it, and then like you got banned on Twitch for using it, and then they're like, "Oh no, 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 no!" This is not El Dorado, or El, uh, not El Dorado. Holy <laughs> shit, El Dorado. This is not El Dorado. El Dorado. El Dorado. Yeah, it's El Dorado. So are not, they going to? Like, do we know if they're actually going to yeah. make that? Like, they said something about it, but no, they said that they were going to work with the community going forward, which I think is their way it's... of saying the next PC game is going to have mod support or um, a public way to access it that would be interesting microsoft well, doesn't, they, they don't want to leave money on the table but microsoft does that already with consoles what and, about skate and, and they put four, forge on pc skate 4 was not a thing session was and uh i think that's going to be interesting but i don't think people understand what session is i've been a uh i've been i was what's that called uh, it, kickstarter it started out as a kickstarter uh, and i've had it for a long time and i don't think people understand what it's not skate force control schemes and people skates control schemes it's a lot different but it's better as far as like a skate game is concerned it's just not what you'd expect it's more i don't know if you have you, have you guys ever played the really a highly regarded thrasher game uh thrasher skate destroy by rockstar no it's very good i stopped about caring time, about skateboarding games after uh Tony Hawk Pro Skater Three. You I've, are are you are you from the past? Yes, because like, I also played like 1080, 1080 like, snowboarding I, on the N sixty four. Baby, dude. Yeah, like, yeah. I, okay, I during SGDQ, during <laughs> SGDQ, they actually had songs from the ten eighty uh, soundtrack, and like I heard it. I was just working. I wasn't even paying attention to SGDQ, and that song came out. I was like, oh, Golden Forest? And I look over and like they've got the, the song that's currently playing down at the bottom right corner. I'm like, holy shit, 1080. I forgot that existed. That was one that's of my... so good. You, you have got to be from the past. Because, Dude. Like, no, I, like, I, I agree with you. After... I, I only did arcadey skateboarding games. I Tony did not Hawk's do any Underground was shit. Every Thug Jackson game was, was shit. Awesome. You don't know what no. you're talking about. Every Thug game yeah. was bad. It jumped the shark after three. I literally think no. there was a jumping Tony the shark Hawks mission in four. Was fantastic. Did it was you guys? So fun. Did you guys ever see the time or time flowed chart of Tony Hawk games? No. Like whenever the developers met Bam, what happened if Bam was to have died? Oh my and god! And all this different stuff went through. It's really funny. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I think Tony Hawk Underground was when it died. The first one was amazing. No, the second Thug one was wasn't awful. As good. American Wasteland was okay only because it had a bike in it. Oh really, god, I, that was I, even I really worse. Didn't... I played that for like ten minutes and I threw it away. That's on you. Uh, yeah, it wasn't that great, but I do like the bike portion of it. That was a lot of fun. Um, Tony Hawk's Underground but, was literally but... born from people loving Jackass. That's the only reason they made that game. No, Tony Hawk's Underground. No way, dude. That Bam was, was never up. cool. That, that whole. That whole thing was a come up. That was like your story as this prodigy, and you and you were coming up it as was, a skateboarder. It was, it was awesome. There was like a spinning you, you, wheel thing, and they had a helicopter, and you had to jump over a helicopter. The whole game was trash. No, it had a story. That's crazy. Oh, that's the, that's silly. If that's, that's a, a, if, like, if you talk about if you talk about Tony Hawk Pro Skater fans, and you talk to Tony Hawk Pro Skater fans. That I was am one of the best. a Tony Hawk Pro Skater fan. No, and you're if, not. If you Thug, are absolutely not. If if Thug had a great so, story. So, 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 of course, all Tony Hawk Pro Skater fans love Underground. <laughs> if you're not a Tony Hawk fan, if you don't like it, of course. So, exactly. <laughs> That's a fact. Okay, so, if Thug exactly. had... So, everyone who likes it, likes it. If of Tony course. Hawk Underground had exactly. a story, then Breath of the Wild story gives Mass Effect a run for its money. <laughs> did you you did play it though right like yes yes i played it. all the way fucking through it and i didn't like it i actually yeah. i went back to tony hawk pro skater 3 after playing through underground because it was just bad what elements they added anyway, uh, like we can talk about this yeah, a lot yeah, because that's... this is you're talking about childhood versus childhood at this point yeah it's like we're never gonna win that and you know who's no. also never gonna win dr robotnik because he's being played by jim carrey in the live action sonic movie 
<laughs> so Rabat I'm not even shitting you. This big. is a new story. So they're going to make Carrie a fat guy again. Yeah. Because the Grinch was kind of. I. <sighs> they don't give a shit about... Like, no one gives a shit about uh, video game titles anymore. Yeah. Not like they ever did to begin with, but, like, they're really... There's never... Like, recently, there hasn't been a very great video game tie... I don't know. Is there... How, what's a good video game tie-in movie? Was Silent there Hill. There's gotta... The first Silent Hill was amazing. Uh, and, and the only reason it was amazing is because the director was such a huge fan that he had... When he was uh, directing shots for the first film, he had a PS1 and PS2 on set where he would play through portions of the game and then direct the cameras himself to say no, no no the game follows this path in this direction and if you're a big silent hill fan there are shots in the movie that are literally shot for shot angle for angle in silent hill one and two it was fantastic i don't that good? Good? i don't remember yeah. it being that good no, no I, the second one the sequel like was awful like an orgasm of no dude i i literally have okay. watched the silent hill movie like at least 10 times because it's really fucking good i okay, don't yeah, Mortal Kombat. i agree predators <laughs> <laughs> Mortal Kombat was easily the best <laughs> i like gotta be another one i don't I, remember I'm, hating, come on chat we could do better than this i don't remember hating the uh laura croft game or movies well, I mean, those were, yeah, yeah, yeah those were good. I'm not saying they're like great. I'm just they, weren't I, like, they weren't like the... So when, when I look at a video game movie, I, I look at, you know, does this have ties to the source material? And everything from Resident Evil to the Tomb Raider movies, they, they literally just took the name and they made a generic action movie out of it. Well, because Tomb Raider, I mean, is just a generic Tomb Raider action. Is a generic action movie, yeah, I kind of... I mean, it's like Uncharted. I mean, make it a generic is, yeah. Uncharted Indiana is just Jones. Indiana Jones, yeah. And and that's exactly what Tomb Raider was. It was just Indiana Jones. That's what they wanted. With I, a female I get it. I'm, I'm gonna, also going to agree with Abel and Semester, the wizard, and add the power glove, which is just so bad. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, just think, I'm just thinking, I don't think that really video game tie-in movies for the most part are pretty garbage. So I it's kind of par for the course. I think yeah. there's one we can all probably agree on was the worst. Mario? So, Mario. Yeah. Mario. They were literally <laughs> drunk on set. Uh, what about there's, the, there's an entire the, like documentary the, website on oh, the Super Mario Brothers movie. And there, there wasn't chat. Oh, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. What about the Mario movie? I actually yeah, saw that in theaters as a child and I owned the VHS. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. The super the super cartoon show was sweet. Yeah, it was. But the movie was awful. Yeah. It, it tripped me out seeing the Goombas. The Goombas, as a kid, tripped me the fuck out. Oh, dude, it was so weird. Like, go back. It, like, I'm tr pretty sure this is on Netflix because I saw it a couple years ago on some streaming platform. It is fucking weird, man. Go back and look at that shit. It was just, it was fucked up. Um, Adam is kind of in the camp of the Resident Evil movie. It was okay. It was just a mindless action. Mindless action. Speaking of mindless yeah, action, right. yeah. Devil May Cry 5 is coming out in 2019, which surprises literally no one. But, hey, Bayonetta, Bayonetta's coming out too, so I'm excited for that one. Yeah. Okay, so I have to ask, outside of one super campy compared to the other, they're all very, very similar they're, game, They're right? very, 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 yeah. very similar. Okay, so I've never played Bayonetta, just, I've only seen it. Bayonetta's really fun. I think I like Devil May Cry, but I really like Bayonetta. And it might just be the timing. It could just be the place. I, it's hard to compare the two because they're so it's, similar. It's a beat them up I really, I really enjoy... You know, I, I, I enjoy them both. There's I a think, tonal difference, though, isn't there? Like, oh, Bayonetta uh, is only knows camp. it's camp, where uh, Devil May yeah. Cry always felt like it's pseudo serious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think I think Bayonetta is more self aware than than Devil May Cry for sure. I think they did, like, even the character, she knows what she's doing, and I think that was one of the arguments for feminism. You know, for people being uh, like, there was like feminists that were against it, but then other people were explaining it, like, you know, no, this is this is awesome because she knows who she is and she acts that way because that's who she is. Right. And it, it, it's, it's great like that. And it does that through the whole game. Like the game knows what it is and it does these things intentionally. It's really good. Just play it. You know, what's yeah, not good game. for fans of the Xbox one who want VR. That's not happening. Yeah. No VR, but they are talking AR though. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, I think AR is ultimately where the future will end. I just don't know how close we are to it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, so, so, Josh, I saved one of the, uh, the stories for close to the last. 
What do you think of Sekiro Shadows Die Twice from From Software? <laughs> we'll see. I, it'll be interesting. I am excited. The, obviously, the grapple hook's a big deal for everyone. Verticality! Think, Verticality and levels in combat! I'm excited. I think it also it'll looks just be really fast. fast. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, I think it'll just be really fast. And I don't know. Hopefully, it'll be really good. I'm excited. Fast is good. I, I always like mm. faster combat. So, so Irk, you wanted to talk about this. We got a 20-minute gameplay trailer of Anthem, which is uh, basically the the answer to uh, Destiny Warframe. Yeah. The um, lifestyle grindy shooter games. But to me, the big pull to Anthem is they're trying to do more of a living world. And if they nail that, it's going to be awesome because their world architecture is great. The way they've designed this world from what they've showed, granted... 20 minute gameplay trailer in house you're going to show your best fucking parts yeah i mean i'll, I'll admit that right now well, except for your voice actors you're going to hire literally the bottom well, of the barrel that was the initial ones now this i don't remember having actual voice actors what i was watching it was actual in-game okay. it, it wasn't the cheesy ass hey tom let's do a mission oh shit i got cup of the infinite i love this item it's the best no so they got away from all that and it was just legitimate gameplay and there was a narrator explaining like hey this is an outpost you might want to tread lightly because they can call for help or then this dude just gets out his big artillery and just blows the fuck out i was like mm. or you can just destroy them but yeah. it's the idea you got the mobility with the jetpacks but it has to be um kind of balanced because you overheat you have to land and you have to land in a bad spot bad things but there's this idea of the storms that arise kind of like rifts from the old um I think EA actually owned the MMO Rift, um, where like it opens up portals to the other side because this is a forgotten world of the gods, blah, blah, blah. The lore in the world architecture, I think, are going to be what draw me to this game. Um, I like the idea that you can switch between the mech suits. You don't choose the Colossus and you're stuck as a Colossus. That is your class. Mm -hmm. You have all four javelins at your disposal. That's nice. So like, okay, you want to play the Colossus this time? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go the more agile one then. And like, you can trade off like that. I, so I think I'm going to ignore Anthem for at least a while after it comes out to see where it shakes out. Uh, because I got Destiny 2 for free uh, and I put like 15 hours into it and I was just done with the game. Uh, I, I put like five hours into Warframe and I'm st I still have no idea what's going on in that game. Uh, the, I have no idea how to play it either. The cool thing, uh, they brought in the writers from Mass Effect okay. as the head for the story. I, I mean, that's good. Mass Effect's great. Um, and the way they're doing the story is really interesting where you are choosing your missions. You are going, people can join you, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But it's still tailored to you even while you're in the multiplayer <laughs> environment with others. Which I'm going to be interested to see how they pull that off. But if they do that well, that's going to be really cool. I, I'm still waiting for somebody to hit. And, and I'm going to bring back a, ba a blast from the past. I'm waiting for a company to pull off the level of story seen in The Matrix Online. Where the, the people playing the MMO actually drove the story. Writers were watching the in-game you know, players going through these missions. So the first guild essentially or ship in the matrix online completed this big mission to go rescue morpheus from this thing where he was captured and the writers actually put that into the game into like books and npcs talking about it into the lore the names of the players the name of the ship that actually pulled off this mission and the players themselves drove the story they drove what would happen you would get divergent choices and if you were the first one in a server to do something then you drove that piece of the story and you were embedded in the game i think it that was really sounds cool. like a shitload of work holy it, shit oh my okay. god they put in so much goddamn work into that game but it was it was too bad that it was a shit game think about it though Fortnite, it was amazing fortnite's kind of doing that so where PUBG's doing different maps <sighs> kind of fortnite is forging the maps now add that with an mmo where you're forging the map over time you can yeah. see what people are doing in the mmo and if, you would you know, just if they write the that, story so like, that way but you know what's interesting about the whole thing is that you notice how like a game games are starting to fall like not not yet but slowly games are going away from the version mentality and becoming more of a service right yes yeah and and i feel like in those games i feel like the maps are all going to start becoming a service as well and that's what that's the fortnite model that's what i think is going to happen i don't think yes. there's ever going to be another fortnite map and I probably think not. I think they're always just, go, and you know what? 
that might be a, a good thing for a game. I'm okay like with that. it. Yeah, it's no. pros and it's, there's pros and cons to both, and I think it's right. a perfectly good model. What, one of the the issues with this model, from from a very specific view, right? It, it's not it's not an overarching view. It's not even like a popular view. But uh, there are his gaming historians out there that try to preserve games as they are. Right? There are people who go out there and crack MMOs and steal server code from old, old, old ass MMOs to preserve them in literally museum states and some of these places where where they you know hang around and, and operate in in a game like Fortnite, are we is some game historian going to say hey this was the Fortnite map as of like june 2016 or, or yep. you know whatever yeah. Yeah. but yeah, they'd however have, they'd, have to, it, they'd have to log it's a really <laughs> really hard problem to solve but i'm going to tell you this right now i'm never going to hinder my gaming based on some historian's way of being oh i totally architect. agree I'm, I'm not even saying that yeah. that even developers should do this i'm just saying these service models uh, as games it's it, pro it poses a very interesting challenge to go back and look at historical record versioning you would do historical versioning yeah you'd have to do yeah. yeah or or even better game companies can actually partner with some of these things like you know the game history museum to say hey you know this here here's our code base and here's our git commits and you can you can go all the way back that would that would be hard to do for a live game i could see them maybe doing that for a dead game but for a live game oh yeah they would never do it for a live game yeah that, that would be well i mean imagine like you're like oh i want to play rocket league post batmobile update or pre batmobile yeah. update or let's say let's i want to play rocket league pre uh post initial batmobile update with the lifted suspension but pre uh uh you know the the ball physics update or whatever yeah. the fuck it was i forgot what it was but like uh yeah so like there's a lot of crazy like iterations that happen and it seems like they're doing that like especially with like fortnite things just they start changing things they don't really it's not like an update that does it like they, they like the things that started growing those are all kind of like just you know little things here well, and there. that's because they're doing it well it yeah. is an update and they're, doing it they're just yeah, doing it so well right no, no no i know i understand that i was more or less saying like you know it's not like a big thing each time like it feels pop organic. Up on the screen, you know, all those things. Yeah. And you're not getting, also, you're not getting a 70 gig update every time Fortnite pushes, you know, new trees into a crater, right? You're, you're getting, oh, hey, let's update for 10 megs and you're done. The, the only yeah. problem mm -hmm. is you need to find a way to monetize it, but not make it to where every small thing, because I agree. If you're doing games as a service, you need to keep paying for something. Yes, you absolutely need to keep paying money. And some companies do that through loot boxes. I actually really, and I, I, I feel bad for not giving them a dime so far, but I really like Fortnite's business model, right? You buy in-game currency, you buy the items you want. That's the model. That's it. That's what I want Rocket League to go to. Oh my god, that would be so good because I want my car to look this way, but I want the So Money Meme Mobile to look this way. And if I could just give Psyonix twenty bucks to get my cars to look the way I want them to look, that's all I need. But that that aside, because we we've harped on that yeah, one, we, we know have. that we know where we stand. I still love games as a service. There, I think a, it's fine. There's occasional solo player games I think still need to be iterative. Yeah. So so something like horizon zero dawn or or breath of the wild right i don't want those to be service games i want them to be one and done this is a story you go through it you're done but in multiplayer games like rocket league dota counter-strike overwatch fortnite if they keep evolving over time that's fine and and it's even more than fine right i know the it's desirable the the rocket league i play today is way better than the rocket league i played two years ago it just is well and just like look at overwatch yeah what right now it's double the amount of heroes there used to be and ham 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 taro okay for the way for the reason or just throwing it out there that character is going to be so op oh it's broken it it's has, broken as fuck it has two ultimates right now i have been playing it in the test region and it is broke as fuck those proximity mines are going to get nerfed out their ass it yep. looks like and the fact that you can slam with the ball holy should shit. not be a standard move dude in in one capture point i literally tethered myself to the center and just swung around no one except my team could stand near me it is broke as fuck and that's why it's on a test server yeah oh did we say there's a hamster in overwatch now yeah yeah Enjoy but i'm it. surprised that there's a severe lack of miley cyrus memes i figure there'd be a lot more you'd why? think it might miss his something. name's wrecking ball oh 
I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, you'd think. It's a really, it's a really obvious meme. I mean, everyone wants, wants him to be called Hammond because that's his actual name. But uh, for that some reason, they decided to call him... It doesn't they, make they decided sense. To call him it's an ball. inside joke. I guarantee they called him Wrecking Ball internally because Overwatch, of Miley Cyrus. Overwatch is so, so inconsistent with the naming because Black Widow's not called Black... Or Widowmaker's not called Widowmaker. Right? That's not her name. Yeah, I, I don't like the idea that you're giving these heroes names. I mean, Diva's not, and that's Diva's not, not her name. She's Yeah. But that's, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. It, it bugs me. The inconsistency bugs me personally. Because I got a lot of that when I first got into Dota. Um, people yeah. are like, hey, pick Wisp. Who the fuck's Wisp? Because they, they're they using the old Warcraft 3 names. Yes. Like, hey, hey, pick Furion. Who the fuck is Furion? Yeah. Oh, you mean that guy? Okay. Yeah, that, that bugs me. I, I like consistency in names, and it makes it easier for new players, too. Yeah. A lot easier. Yeah, I agree. I, I think Dota's problem is more specific to Dota. Yeah, but I mean, it's the same thing. If your character has a name, but that's not the name they actually have in the game. What's really their name? Yeah. Ah, good times, good times. Man, that was... That was that a was, long-ass podcast. That was a long week, man. Yeah. Long week, long month. Long month, long month. Well, we had EA in there. So oh, yeah, I forgot. EA. Do you guys want to uh, talk about EA a little bit more? No. No. You sure? Now no, we're good. We did some Pokemon Go raids. That was fun. Oh yeah, yeah. We forgot to talk about that yeah. real quick. Uh, hey Josh, you play Pokemon Go? I did. Do you still? No. What team? Hmm. What team? I don't even remember. The blue one probably. Oh no. Oh uh, well. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I th- after uh, talking about it, I think I we convinced Tom to get back in. Yeah, and uh, we did a raid cruise where we literally just drove around town looking for raids, parked, and then did raids. There's actually a sizable amount of people still playing Pokemon. Go. I told you that. I had you, no idea. Like your typical self, no, there's not. If I'm not doing it, people aren't doing it. <laughs> I had no idea, and apparently, Pokemon Go is making a million dollars a day. That's a lot of money. Tom's yeah. literally from the past. I am literally <laughs> from the past. Have but you guys so played is everyone Mass Effect? Else, if you ask him. Have Mass you, Effect is pretty cool. Have you guys played cool. this new game? <laughs> Skyrim? It's supposed to be fantastic. I still don't know any of the characters' names because the writing's so bad. Have you but, guys played this new game from Valve called Half-Life? I actually played a brand new game demo, Octopath Traveler from Squaresoft Looks on the good. Switch. I played it. I'm never buying it. Really? The writing is so fucking atrocious the game looks so good also it's so the right like the writing the characters i hate everything about that game literally the writing is some of the worst i've seen in any rpg ever it's like a fucking the, middle schooler wrote I it don't play rpgs for the writing what do you Wait, play what? rpgs for because i That's want really to, good I, I don't play for story i've told you guys this the, the, get the cookie border, clicker the border, cookie clicker is the, the game for you hate games <laughs> If I you, want, play those if for the you story. want to grind, get Cookie Clicker. No, if I want to grind, go to an RPG. No, you that play it for tr- the story. It's got writing. That's literally all the content. There's characters and they do things. It's and not it's all story. the content. That's why poor writing still works oh in the game. Oh my god! But anyway, they did something really. You would love Octopath Traveler. There's something really interesting I wanted to pull point out. I don't know if you know about this. The way they do their demo, it's a three hour time box, and whenever you're done, you can buy the game. This, this demo isn't some canned, here's this area. You're literally playing the game for three hours. And then if you buy the real game, you pick up right where you were in the demo. Your save you file don't transfers. restart. It's pretty cool. It is um, the, the best way I've ever seen a demo done. The, the thing that Square is doing with this game, which is interesting, is it's eight different characters, all with their unique stories, and they all like meet up at some point. It's, it's interesting. I would totally buy it, because it, it looks like a game that's totally up my alley if the writing wasn't made by like a degenerate middle schooler it's not pretentious enough it's Tom. so fucking bad it needs to be system shock or nothing it's it's just so bad the witcher <laughs> has has just ruined do i have 47 all RPGs. different ways to complete my mission no game's trash <laughs> i don't know <laughs> this game i don't know like can, the, I do, can i do it stealth melee but also melee stealth <laughs> The, no, the Witcher game. Three was is was this really morally linear. ambiguous. And I really don't know what to do. Okay, morally ambiguous is absolutely the Witcher. <laughs> I've I've been ruined. RPG. I was absolutely ruined for all RPGs thanks to Mass Effect and the Witcher. Yeah. You can't go to like a fine dining establishment 
and then expect all of your meals from the that point on to be that quality of food. If I'm paying if you go, to Mc, go to McDonald's, what do you mean I can't pick the wellness no, of my no. burgers? Okay, if McDonald's cost as much as that fucking five star restaurant, I absolutely can. And I am if, not buying if, Octopath Traveler for sixty dollars when I bought The Witcher for three for thirty. Well, that's also because you bought The Witcher three. The thing later. is, is dude, like I would buy bought, it for sixty. You bought a game that was prob that like if you had to do apples to apples comparison and the average was sixty dollars for a game, you you just got a deal. So you just got like a sirloin wagyu beef steak <laughs> for like four dollars. Is you know if you went dollar for right. dollar, but so like. My, Again, my point is that, like, that. It's, I'm not going to give a pass to a bad game with bad writing because some guy might feel bad that it came from McDonald's. It came from fucking McDonald's. It's a bad game. <laughs> it's got bad wait, writing. Wait, writing doesn't make a game. <laughs> game. Writing make makes it. an RPG. Not true. Writing absolutely makes an RPG. Not true. The, uh, the writing to Fable was not good. The Fable writing to Pokemon was Red fun. was amazing. Sure, sure. It Tell was. yourself that. That Actually, truck? Thank, thank you for giving me a good example. Yeah. Anyway, I think two hours of us bitching is plenty for this month's installment. What? <laughs> just us yelling at Tom. So yeah. about, e uh, finally, about Origin. Someone teams up on me and says, Tom, you're just being stupid. Okay, so with Origin, the thing about the party system that I absolutely hate the worst. Okay. I'm giving you so, an out. Oh, <laughs> uh, I was getting there. All right. I, I know how to segue this. Anyway, the weird party system and, and trying to find friends on Origin and the whole combination of Shift and F1, I just, I don't like it. I was saying how long you right, go. Right. Anyway, so for all you stuck with us, thank you guys. Been great. And we're sorry. And, and we're sorry for Tom. Uh, but typical rundown, we have a website, 72pinconnector.com. Go there, see our shit, click on shit. Promise one of these days we'll be updating our stuff. I'm a lazy piece of shit, so I've been slacking awful. Um, we have a Twitter, at 72PC Podcast. Tweet at us. Let us know what we think. You think. We think. We all think. Just let us know. Um, we have a YouTube, 72 Pin Connector. You can go there, check out our old videos, uh, including some gameplay videos and all sorts of other stuff. And if you're over there watching us a couple years from now when this video gets up, you can hopefully still watch us live the first Saturday of every month on our Twitch at TV. I will tell you about all the games that are at least five years old and about $6 a piece. And then I'm going to complain that $60 games just don't match up. Yes. So that means the games that actually probably be about 10 years by the time you watch it. Yep. But um, <laughs> twitch.tv slash 72 pin connector Saturday. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Come join us. Chill in the chat. It's a good fucking time. So, with that, y'all, been a good one. And until next month, game on. Wow.